Hello, good morning, and welcome to News File. This is your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. So you heard the president, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, on the state of the nation. His conclusion is that the nation is in good health and in good competent hands. What is your reality? Start sending us your messages now. What is your reality? Don't walk out on our assessment of the claims on Galamse and corruption fight, the successes in financial sector cleanup, security, among others. We'll be right back to deal with the VEX matters. You're welcome back. It's some 12 minutes after nine. And here is my take. Could you? Where are the information officers? My RTI request number four. I've been very disappointed at the conduct of the Electoral Commission and its lawyers in treating the RTI request for information by a citizen, one who is also a representative of citizens in Parliament. I have condemned it. It is shameful as it is insulting. It is such a missed opportunity for an independent constitutional body that thrives on positive brand image and goodwill. The conduct detracts from the letter and spirit of the Constitution, the RTI Act, and good governance. It is disturbing how public officers often forget it is same citizens' tax that gives them a job. And the information they deny the citizen, that is if it's not an exempted information, is generated for and on behalf of citizens with their tax money. I doubt citizens will tolerate this for always. The very first article of the Constitution reads, quotes, the sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana in whose name and for whose welfare the powers of government are to be exercised. It is public knowledge that I am a member of the RTI campaign I don't only know the law, I made inputs and policed and literally forced its passage. The EC got it so wrong, I must say, together with its lawyers, and must have something to hide. You are spending $72 million of citizens' tax on just one project, and you are adverse, adverse to openness. Charlotte Osei and her colleagues were removed on charges of breaches of procurement procedures, may I remind you, even though removal from office is not one of the procurement law's prescriptions for that near default act, for which almost all public office holders shall lose their jobs if put through the same process. I've given the education that you don't need a lawyer to request information under the RTI law. In fact, all you have to do, if you can read, if you can read, or write is to walk that if you can't read or write is to walk to the public institution you seek information from you make an oral application the information officer there will put your request into writing get an independent witness to read it back to you for your approval and signature or thumbprint he shall make copies and hand one to you you leave to await being contacted within 14 days generally and within two days, if the information you seek is about the safety or liberty of a person. In January, Information Minister Kojo Oponkruma boldly announced that hundreds of these information officers had been trained or are being trained and are ready to serve you if you made a request last month. Section 19 makes it mandatory for a public servant information officer to receive and deal with your request. Note, a public servant information officer, not a hired private lawyer or law firm. If you are aggrieved by the decision of the officer, 
you appeal by way of what the law calls internal review to the head of that institution and he or she has 15 days within which to make a decision. The RTI Commission, not set up yet, may also come in to resolve the issue and may order the institution to give you access to the information you seek. The court is the last resort. And don't ask me that people should be going to court. If they go to court, they go with their money, and the state will use my money still to prosecute the matter. In fact, the law was passed to give effect to Article 211F of the Constitution to avoid citizens having to expend money on lawyers and in court to obtain information not exempt from disclosure and which is generated with their tax money. The implementation of the law was postponed for a whole year for these structures to be put in place, right? So, could you? What happened? Where are they? Why are private law firms unlawfully usurping the roles of officers and at what additional cost to the taxpayer? You can read my take on my jawonline.com, but I need to point out this. The lame and wrong excuse that Parliament has not yet determined fees and charges for reproduction of information sought flies in the face of Section 75.2 of the law, which provides almost a dozen circumstances where the information must be supplied free of charge. In fact, these include reproduction of information which is in the public interest. But beside that, Section 28 <coughs> of Act, 89, Act 989 prescribes a first mode of giving access to information to give one, quote, reasonable opportunity to inspect the information. This, obviously, does not need Parliament determining any fees and charges. The lame excuse used to deny NS Nogwe, MP for a chairman, what should be harmless procurement information in the public interest is very bizarre. So, by the law, you may be asked to bring an electronic uh, process by which you can be giving the information. Could be that you bring a pen drive, it could be that you bring um, a CD, and so on, unless the photocopies to be made to you is, such in, is, is in such huge volumes that you may be required to make a payment. But even if you have to be, make a payment, did they easily discuss this with the person who asked for the information, and did he agree? So I think this is not a difficult thing to do. We can't be so dumb that the cost of photocopy must require parliamentary intervention to determine even where there has not been an attempt to first discuss the cost of photocopy with the applicants. Parliament must do this one minute job immediately. The implementation body, the independent RTI commission must be set up immediately and the ministry and government must make a statement that discourage this conduct, which has the potential of a bad precedent. And that's my take. You can read it on myjoyonline.com. So let me introduce my guest. And my guest this morning to check if what the president spoke about is your reality are Dr. Kojo Pumpuni Asante to my in immediate right. He's, he's Director, Advocacy and Policy Engagement of the CDD Ghana. Okay. By him is Kojo Oponkrumah, Minister for Information and MP Ayurebi. Of Wasi Ayurebi Koko. Okay. Of Wasi Ayurebi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Also here is John Jinapo to my extreme left. Abdullahi Jinapo, he's member, Finance, Mines and Energy Committees of Parliament. And MP uh, Kush Kushogu. Yape, Yape Kushogu. Kushogu. Yes, thank you. Kofi Bento is Senior Vice President of Imani Africa, the rebel. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen, and welcome mm. to News File. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, shall we begin with finding out why the NDC minority in Parliament decided to walk out 
on such an important day for such an important occasion in Parliament. And after that, we will get into some of the details and uh, sectors of the economy that the President spoke about and deal with those specifics. But let's watch and listen to the NDC minority um, on how they did what they did. protest eminent threat to the sustenance of multi-party constitutional democracy and to reject the tyrannical tendencies of President Nanadu Dankwa and to reject his attempt to interfere with the Electoral Commission to compile a voter register that as cautiously won by the U.S. State Department may lead to voter suppression, particularly in the NDC strongholds. We are particularly alarmed as the President's refusal to recommend the recommendations of the Emil Short Commission report arising out of the Iowa West Wagon by election in January 2019. The President continues to shield his indicted appointees even as that threatens the peace and stability of our country and its democracy. I mean, what happened in Iowa West Wagon was sp state sponsored terrorism. When you have people who use state authority, state resources, state power to intimidate a political opponent, it's not the same thing as justifying an MPP and DC rivalry or conflict or fight that may end regrettably or unfortunately. But State sponsored. Can you imagine what will happen to the state and republic December 7, 2020? If we have a repeat of that in just parts of the country or substantial parts of the country, and we are particularly concerned that many of their vigilantes have found their way into the security agencies, and we doubt whether their loyalty will be to the state or to the new patriotic party. If you are comfortable with vigilante groups going into the Ghana police service, God bless you. If you are comfortable with the continuous closure of radio, FM station, and television station, and you are dear to democracy, God bless with you. With the vigilante groups that you say have infiltrated the security services, the Peace Council is currently taking part in talks between the NDC the and the MPP to root out these groups. The NDC has refused to sign the document. Yeah, because of the insincerity associated with some of these dialogue processes, you openly see MPP vigilantes being absorbed. Today, you didn't you see them as you are entering. They offended us off to walk out. So it's because of them that you walked out? You saw the SWAT group. You saw them. They were deployed. We can't accept them. So is it because of the presence of the SWAT group that you walked out? It is part of our reason. We elevated it and we uh, considered it. But when we saw them, then we say our democracy is in danger. Right. So that's Harun Idrisu, minority leader in parliament. They walked out. And yesterday you understood that in the House, questions uh, began to uh, fly left, right, center, whether or not they be allowed to participate in the debate of the report that they did not sit in to uh, listen. Let me begin with the minister. Could you... <coughs> you say this is, this is like an anathema, unforgivable sin. How so? They have outlined a number of issues for which they needed to use this platform to draw attention to potential voter suppression, potential, uh, and, and, and as they say, suppression of press freedom and among other things. 
Samson and um, colleagues, good morning, and good morning to our viewers and to our listeners. I would uh, instead want to move the conversation forward um, and start with a conclusion. Um, two things I'd like to say. First is that all of us should be very careful about the things that we do that have the potential to undermine the pillars of our democracy. Second is that I would even urge the majority to be very accommodating of the minority views when the full debate commences on Tuesday. And I do know that I think leadership has already had some conversations to that effect. Indeed, yesterday, the majority leader signaled um, and advised that we will be expecting to have um, a smooth debate on the floor. Uh, despite my colleagues' uh, abdication of their duties, we need to show maturity. We need to take the higher ground so that we avoid what is becoming a race to the bottom. Mm. Um, I've had colleagues, as I mentioned, who say they will obstruct the minority from expressing their views. But as I've mentioned, we need to uh, quickly move forward so that the real intent of what Article 67 requires us to do can be achieved. Now, um, there's one question that is, I think, above all being floating. Is the walkout by the minority justified at all in any way? And we have heard the various um, explanations, including the very latest by my good friend, the Honorable Harun Idrisu, that um, the presence of the SWAT um, team, I think, um, at the precincts of parliament uh, is part of their reasons. <clears throat> First of all, I say that this, this walkout was ill-conceived. It was ill-conceived because you, you observe the various reasons they have given at every point in time, and it's obvious that even they themselves cannot agree on a specific cogent reason for which they did it. Almost every opportunity, they give a different reason. Um, they change reasons, and I say, um, um, uh, in one particular, I say almost every hour they are changing the reason for which they did that. And what now, what now they've resorted to is a post facto rationalization of what they did. Because if you take the antecedents and the reasons that they gave, it doesn't match the kind of action that they sought to embark on. First of all, when the Honorable Samson Ahin held a press conference at the beginning of the week, the reason that he gave, that they will be staging either a boycott or a walkout because district assemblies common fund allocations had not been paid, sounded absurd. And all of us agree that, yes, though at the time the monies hadn't hit their accounts, abdicating Article 67 responsibility is not the answer. And I'll go into that a bit more um, later. Then later, after they actually received the president, ushered him into the chamber, at the end of the national anthem, came up with a chorus and literally caused this embarrassment. Their first explanation was that they wanted to ignore the president because he has been ignoring some matters that are of interest to them. Then they had another one where they talk about the, um, their view that the entire body of recommendations of the Iowa Suez Wogon uh, inquiry report should be implemented. And you would expect that these are legislators, many, many of them are lawyers, and they know the position of the law on commission of inquiry reports. And the fact that the law does not even back that view that once a commission of inquiry has issued a report, simpliciter A to Z, everything in it will be A, accepted or B, implemented. The law gives room for government to express a certain view and even act on what it chooses or what it agrees with. They have had an opportunity to be in government. The law didn't change then. It hasn't changed now. It's still the same law. Um, they now went on to another excuse that the president has shut down radio stations, another absurd reason because the president cannot, has not shut down radio stations. We are all clear. Uh, uh, the NCA fined people. They went to court. The court agreed with that class action that the NCA didn't have the power to find them. And then as a consequential order, or as a consequential explanation, the court said, they don't have the power to find you because by failing to renew the license, you have actually relinquished it. And NCA had to proceed there, there, there from and then uh, you know, ensure that these stations, which were at that time operating without a license, okay, the uh, NCA, cease the, from the it. NCA's tribunal, electronics tribunal, is what you refer to as the court. That is. All right. Then now they came to the other excuse of the, um, in fact, one, there was, there was one about Charlotte say, why did you ask Charlotte say if you, um, you know, and everybody knows the process, the internal challenges of the EC, the petitions, the cross petitions they made against themselves and what happened. Then they come up with a new register. So it's a, I mean, a whole myriad of changing or uh, adding reasons. So it was obvious that they wanted to do this. And post facto, they've been finding, um, you know, reasons for it. But why I say that it is not justified or it doesn't match what they did, even if these arguments um, uh, have some foundation. It's simple. You see, 
the mandate of Article 67 is not in the normal course of parliamentary business. The normal course of parliamentary business, the standing orders regulators, I can come by statement, somebody can bring a motion, we may have a report of a committee, there may be a resolution we are considering. Those are the normal course of parliamentary business. And we, uh, we disagree on it, there may be walkouts, there may be boycotts associated with that. But if you look at our constitution, Article 67 imposes an obligation on the president to perform. And my reading of the entire constitution picks it up even from the principle of probity and accountability. That we must have a platform where the president will account to the country through parliament mm. for what has transpired, part of which we'll be doing uh, today. So the Article 67 obligation on the president is not in the normal course of parliamentary business. Indeed, in my understanding, it is a constitutional obligation that the president has to perform. And if I just may read, it says the president, it doesn't say me, the president shall at the beginning of each session of parliament and before a dissolution of parliament, comma, deliver to parliament a message on the state of the nation. So it imposes an obligation on the president. It imposes an obligation on parliament. Parliament meaning the entire body of parliament. Indeed, by convention, we have even stepped it up forward by now ensuring that the, the entire judiciary or the head of the judiciary is present. The Supreme Court judge, judges are present. The scale of justice is brought there. You'll find that the president, staff of office, vice president, everybody, the former president, everybody, the, it ceases to be one of our normal parliamentary dances that we are having. And it is a sacred national duty that we are all invited to come perform. So even if these arguments you are making are valid, there are many legal options to express them and to get um, uh, redress to them than to say that you are abdicating your Article 67 obligation that is imposed on you uh, by the Constitution of our Republic. Um, if you read a bit further into perhaps, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll start from the oath of office that a member of parliament takes. And with your permission, let me just read. It says, I, Kujo Pongkum, having been elected a member of parliament, doing the name of the Almighty God, swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Ghana as by law established, that I will uphold preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution, including this Article 67 obligation. And I will faithfully and conscientiously discharge the duties of a member of parliament. And my understanding is that if you look at the spirit of what the Constitution seeks to do when it comes to co constitutional obligations, look at um, Article 2, the entirety of Article 2. When a person commits an act or fails to commit or to do something that the Constitution requires him to do, you see the severity of the sanctions that the Constitution breathes on it. So Article 67 obligations, in my view respectfully, should not be taken as you know, um, a matter that uh, I feel this way or I feel that way. I hear them sometimes say that um, they, they, they are doing what the MPP did in 2013. Um, two things I'll say to that. First of all, what happened in 2013 is remarkably different from what happened in Parliament, I think, a couple of days ago. In 2013, How? the MPP, when it argued that it was challenging the legitimacy of the man, John Dramani Mahama, as president. Argued that it could not, it as a party, could not cooperate with him in any of the functions that he seeks to perform in his capacity as, as president because they, they fundamentally disagree with that EC declaration that was made. And therefore, they were proceeding to the Supreme Court to get that declaration. Now, watch what happened. Not only did they not participate generally in that address, they didn't disrupt it. Secondly, you'll find that they continued through with a number of national activities that were to be done by Mr. Mahama at that time in consonance with what they were doing in court and argued that they did not want to undermine their court process in any way. Is that, is that not even worse? I'll come to that conclusion. Is that scenario not even worse? I'll come to that conclusion. Where you have put your case in court and your case is being addressed and then you take this posture. I will come to that conclusion. Their view was that by participating in anything that will legitimize his presidency, they were undermining their case in court. There's no and legal basis not, for that view. There's and no they, did not, for that they view. did not proceed to disrupt any of his activities nonetheless. Now, you notice that when the court ruled that they were wrong, they quickly went back to now doing business with him as president. In the case of Nana Adankwa Kufado, nobody's challenging his presidency. Mm. 
there are no qualms even from the minority side about the fact that he's a legitimately elected president. If he's a legitimately elected and sworn in president, you haven't challenged that, and he's coming to parliament to perform a constitutional duty, and then you raise some of these issues that these are your little issues for which you won't participate, it sounds to everybody as laughable. Now my okay. final point. Mm. If you say that, and in those days, if you say that what the MPP did was wrong, it was such a low standard, it was terrible, how can you, what, three, four, five years down the line, when you say that you want to offer a better, or better alternative to governance, mm. now say that you now want to go and stoop so low? Good question. So you have asked one of my okay. questions to John already. But most importantly, most importantly, most yeah. importantly, yeah. moving forward, I think leadership is agreeing that, listen, let's put these things behind us. These are things that uh, lower our bars right. as, uh, you know, uh, okay. MPs. You may have the opportunity the to state this briefly before we end uh, the discussion on this matter. Hold on. <laughs> I want my <laughs> other guests... <laughs> to let you hear how they feel mm -hmm. and what they think about what you did, then you come in uh, last to say what you have to say. Now, so, Doc, I mean, as uh, democratic <coughs> governance watchers, good governance institution and um, conduct watchers, is this what Kojo Ponkrumah says it is, or is it even worse? <laughs> well, thank you, and uh, good morning to your uh, listeners and your viewers. Um, I think, I mean, the first point is that parliamentary boycotts are a legitimate practice um, uh, within the parliamentary culture, but it is one of the last um, tools that you want to use. And if you're going to use it, you have to have a very good reason for using it. And it's really even less more uh, about the law than more about building parliamentary culture, democratic culture, and building institutions. So in this instance, I think the NDC was wrong. And um, just as the MPP was wrong in 2013. Because I, you know, in all the grievances that the MP NDC has laid, I think there are very good avenues you know, for dealing with these are very substantive issues. If you talk about the register issue, we there has to be a forum to deal with that substantively, either through IPAC, uh, other kinds of platforms that have been created, the eminent committees, and so on and so forth. There's a lot to discuss, a lot to address. You know, there, and I think already the moves that have been made, uh, uh, you know, uh, should be commended and should be continued. Mm. The same issue with the vigilante matter, because some of the issues they raise around the report from, you know, I was West where I gone, uh, how do we deal with the issues of the vigilantism? These are important because we already have uh, a voter registration process just around the corner. We need to deal with those kinds of issues, uh, but I don't think that is the forum, the Peace Council forum is the, the right kind of forum to deal with that. And, and then we have to address it. Shutting down radio stations, we have to use the NMC process and so on. So, um, and in the NCA process. Uh, not, I think uh, we have it. NMC doesn't intervene, it's the NCA. Yeah, but I think the issue is that if you are just going to address the regulatory mm -hmm. component, but when you have to deal with uh, free press, mm. Uh, that is an NMC. Yeah, NMC doesn't have power to order the NCA to do what. But it, it has a role within uh, the legislation, mm. and and that is there's a particular reason why the constitution and the statute place the NMC there. It I think persuade, I th it cannot compel them to do anything. Sure, basically. but they can yeah. create a forum for for okay. for for a discussion around that. Mm. So I thought that um, with with all of those kinds of avenues, I didn't think this was the right forum. I, we really need to build those institutions no matter what and that, that's you know the beauty of this kind of annual ritual mm. is that no matter our disagreement this is the kind of place that we all come and recognize uh democracy as you know diverse uh, sometimes competitive as conflicting but we respect each other mm. to allow certain functions to be performed i am i don't know i didn't see the 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 uh, uh, President Mahama there, for instance, right. I thought he should have been there, you know, because no matter what the situation, no matter the disagreements, these are the opportunities. It is for somebody to just smile at you and to say hello, you know, can reduce the tension. 
So I think we need to take some of these platforms very, very seriously. And if we're going to make a move like that, it has to be very substantive. And I don't think that uh, the reasons that were put forward, that was the action that needed to be taken uh, there. So uh, really so, for so State of the Nation could address... You says, could you say we have to be careful about the things we do that undermine the democracy? And he says it does appear this is a race to the bottom. We must stop it. Is well, that what you see? These two parties like to equalize. They always set pre bad precedents that they follow each other. And that's why it's important for that's everybody. Everybody have to rein in, you know, because otherwise the next person will come and say, ah, you did it in 20, mm. 2020, and therefore I'm also doing it in 2024. Yeah, he's saying that that's, that's what he means by be, race to the bottom. We must stop yeah, from some point. I, I really so think maybe the NDC should be the first to start with whilst it is in opposition to stop. Yes, a big the big. Hoping that when the NDC gets the opportunity to come to power, the opposition NPP mm -hmm. then and will there are, also not And there are new standing that. orders that mm -hmm. Parliament is, is looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, can is there a way to do something about boycotts and so on within the rules of Parliament? You think, you think there's a way? Well, I think we should explore it. Is it we, possible to use standing orders to stifle or take away your constitutional and human rights? No. Well, the, I, that's the, the, some of the parliamentary is just based on, on practice you know, and so on. But nobody can stop you from uh, you know, boycotting process, right? You will violate parliamentary rules, but it's, it's a protest, right? But the point is that is there a way in which you can, as he's saying, normal parliamentary business. Yeah, we disagree on a tax bill or whatever it is, we might use that. But you can't do that for a state of a nation address or you can't do that for this kind. Of, this is still parliament's rules. Okay. So there is a way in which we can address that. But at the end, we, all, we have to be Democrats. If we are not invested in this democratic system, then we must well forget it. No matter how many rules we put in place, we'll keep violating it, undermining all of that. I guess my last there's, point. The standing orders and the constitution says you cannot cross mm. carpet, not literally speaking. They cross carpet. They went to take their seats. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was one, <laughs> one, well, one, I just wanted to draw your attention you uh, and, and, you just crossed. and just refer, <laughs> refer to what happened in the US recently, um, you know, after the impeachment process, mm. when uh, uh, President Trump had to go and, and deliver his State of the Union. Mm. It, there was a suggestion that you know Congress could have used their majority to block him from even delivering that mm -hmm. because the, it's toxic. The, you know, there's the toxic. But at the end, you need to respect these institutions because once that crumble, what is the what is the avenue for holding you together? And Nancy made a statement. He tore up the yeah. The so if it at that the space, speech. yes, and if it, yeah, right. And people you know are upset yeah, about right. that, right? Mm -hmm. But the point is that they did not prevent him from coming to deliver the state of the... Because you need the sanctity of, of those kinds of... She mentioned, though, that there is an alternative, but the alternative would have been worse. Yeah, so, so it's just to make the point that we need to build these institutions, okay. and some of these things are symbolic. And once you begin to devalue them, then you know you lose the certainty of, uh, of, of, of the democratic the, practice. The, the majority, some of the members, including uh, Esla, have been heard saying that the minorities will not be allowed to come to back to the house and debate the But statement. that's the point. If we keep going, and as Kojo is saying, if you take that approach... Is there a basis for that in the first place? No, because if you, are, if you accept that that was wrong, then the worst you can do is to ride on that to commit even more wrongs. Okay. You know, because they, are the represent, they also represent, mm. uh, you know, uh, guardians okay. in parliament. Right. And so they need to Kofi, be there to debate. Yeah. Yes. What, 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 what do you say? And Kudu okay. says that this must be the last resort oh. and it must be done with good reason. Oh. He actually says you need the right forum. What you have heard the minority raise as the reasons? Oh. Are they not good reasons justifying such a forum? There can never be, in real essence, a justification for a thing like this. And when Kojo made those final statements, Which I was, was hoping. Produced, by the way. Oh, okay. Opongo. <laughs> <laughs> the minister. When the minister for information, <laughs> Mr. Opongo made those final statements, mm. I was hoping he would follow through and hoping he had the mandate and authority here to state. 
that MPP will never do a thing like this <laughs> anymore. But you see, my other brother Kojo. Can you give that assurance? Is, are you in the capacity you? to give I that assurance? I will not assurance? be in the capacity to give that assurance. No, no. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. being very honest and objective. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to see us do that ever mm -hmm. again. But I don't know how long I'm going to be in Parliament. I don't mm -hmm. know what they are going but to do. But you could give us your personal right. commitment but to no, work no, no. I mean, I would, I would not encourage any yeah, such yeah, action. I've been quite clear with it. I would not so encourage any such action. I'll explain why I'm going there. Okay. And my brother Kojo was making the point that, look, it's a race to the bottom. That's extremely important. What we have done... A race to the bottom which started when? But that's where I'm going. You see, yeah. I'm trying really not to read too much history. Mm. But honestly, this started from the consultative assembly. Mm -hmm. When, more or less, the legal minds who tended to you know, congregate in one section boycotted the constitution altogether. Now, that has become a vicious cycle, has ended up in parliament, and now we are racing to the bottom. I do it, you do it, I do it, you do it. Now, we can start a virtuous cycle. Okay, when they go low, go high. <laughs> we can start a virtuous cycle. So that's my preaching to Kojo and John and the rest that let's start a virtuous cycle by somebody declaring we will never do this. Let me tell you why it is important. One of the most important things that get lost, the first things that get missing with failed states mm. is the denigration of state ceremonies. Mm. When you see these march past people marching, when you see these you know, ceremonies of state, where people, the chief justice comes dressed up and whatever, it looks like it is frivolous. It is not. No, okay. It is a representation of the state. Mm -hmm. And your ability to carry that out. To connect, to connect with it. Okay, actually. yes. Yeah. And connect with it. The ability to bring the whole nation together in those rituals of state, those ceremonies of state is really a testament to the stability and viability mm. of the nation. Mm. So please, when you do these things, you just undermine everything. And let nobody take it lightly. It may not be much in one sense, but it's an embarrassment, okay? At least to the person who is delivering the speech. But all that said and done, let's be clear. These are ceremonies of state, rituals of state. They come out of conventions, they come out mm. of, you know, working things over time, which is why they underline the fact that you are state. But they are not legally required. No, no, no. Article 67, which is the legal basis for this, it says that the president shall, at the beginning of each session of parliament and before a dissolution of parliament, deliver to parliament a message on the state of the nation. I hold the view that the president does not have to go to parliament to read. It says deliver to parliament. The president can choose to send them a letter. And it says shall at the beginning and before the end, at any point. So the constitution gives you some latitude for you to build these ceremonies of state in. So when the president moves his seat, and, and even that convoy that he comes with, those ceremonies of state, they infuse the rest of us with a sense of patriotism and nationhood. It is not for nothing. So back to the point, please. You people who like to walk in, walk out, do I think citizens have come to the point where we now see it as a minor irritation mm -hmm. that politicians are prone to do. And so, oh, they've worked out. Okay, what next? It's, it's, it's not good enough. So speaking from that point of view, it would be nice for one of you to decide that we will not do this anymore. Or at least pick some ceremonies of state mm -hmm. and elevate them to the point where they will not be affected by these irritations. But essentially, they are irritations. And I hear when they finish, they went to watch, you know, in their offices. So the, the essence of that thing, you know, I think, you know, it's not lost on anybody. But it's just by, the by, drama of by it. The, by the Constitution, the president, once elected, enjoys the full powers of the president and exercises them as, a, as, a, as the executive in the absence of anything, mm -hmm. unless otherwise determined that he's not properly elected. Mm -hmm. This 2013 one that they bring in and to the rationalization they give to it, mm -hmm. is it justified? Mm -hmm. No. No, I mean, it's so, true. but again, so I started by saying it's not about the reasons they give. And like I just said, they give you many reasons. And um, the Minister of Information is saying, oh, they have too many reasons. They do this. Why can't they have all those reasons to say, because of all these things, we will not sit there? I think they have a legitimate right. But the fundamental point, I think, is this. When people feel 
that they are not being listened to. When people feel that the other party has decided that whatever you say, we will do what we want to do. When they feel frustrated and they feel like they've used every option, take the easy matter which they've raised as a reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the face of real serious information, okay, we have a situation where we told, and the gentleman who sat here the last time said, we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. Okay, when you have a situation like that, people feel like rebelling. So for me, the reason is not necessarily a justification, but the fact that they get to the point where they have a series of things where they feel they've hit a block and they are not going to be listened to, they have few things left than to rebel. It's the same thing that drives citizens onto the streets. Mm. So for me, honestly, it is a legitimate tool of protest in Parliament everywhere in the world. What I hope we will do is to create a virtuous cycle, elevate some ceremonies of state beyond this partisanship, you know, shenanigans, okay, and then hold them sacrosanct. Now, the other side How should can also you appreciate. I'm here to say it's a legitimate tool of protest. And at the same time, say this should not happen. Well, because I'm saying legitimate tool of protest, when you feel like you will not be heard, your views will not be countenanced, the person has executive power and a majority in parliament, and so whatever you say, they will not listen, then you don't have any option than to protest. I'm also saying that even though you have that right to protest, okay, we, the citizens of this country, are affected by it in all kinds of ways. If you start denigrating state ceremonies, you are making us look like a failed state. It is that serious. Mm. And state ceremonies do not have to be tied in law. Look, the British, none of their ceremonies is tied in any law. But they've worked yeah. this over so many years. The Look reasons, at the budget. The reasons they so give. please don't do it even if you feel... The reasons they give, do you find them valid enough, cogent enough to use this as the forum? <laughs> they talk about, you know, um, the tyranny mm. of, <laughs> of the president mm -hmm. and that he's simply not listening. He's ignoring mm -hmm. on very important issues. Mm -hmm. They've spoken about the Ayawa So Commission report. They've spoken about, of course, Kujopon refers us to the white paper. Um, they, spoke, they spoke about a number of things, including the very recent uh, trade fair mm -hmm. matter of uh, Raymond Archer's uh, mm -hmm. you know, factory together with machines demolished. So you can and have the, many reasons the why they've explained that they you didn't destroy any machines. I think we have to check that, that fact. They didn't destroy, they didn't any, destroy machines. any machines. You should they check. destroyed portions of the building. Yeah. Okay. You can have many reasons why you feel aggrieved. <laughs> but words like tyranny cannot be properly used in a democracy like this. The people of this country decided to elect President Andakufuado and give him the powers he has. Mm. You are in parliament. If you want to change those powers, change them. The people of this country decided that we'll give the MPP a majority in parliament. We have given them the power. How they use this is their prerogative until the next four years. So I disagree with the use of words like tyranny. Go to court or whatever. I have my problems, for instance, what's going on with the EC and so many other things. And you know the number of times we go to court on different things. Again, it's nation building. Please, if you feel you are not being heard, go and campaign hard. Regain your you know, majority in parliament, campaign hard, become the president next time. But words like tyranny, etc. Look, whatever the NDC feels they are aggrieved by, I don't think anybody has broken any law. So again, my point is, you may have a reason why you are upset and want to protest, but I want to let them reflect on the fact that this is not just about them. It has an effect on the rest of the nation. Okay. So they should choose and pick. This is not, for me, one of the best ways to do it. Use other things, but let's elevate some ceremonies of state mm. above partisan bickering. And did you say go to court also? Yes, go to court. So use they other go means. to court on the, their disagreement with the Ayawaso thing. We have heard some judge say mm. he would take an action about mm. that I, mm -hmm. on the white paper. Mm -hmm. They should go to court on the Electoral Commission. No, I think their disagreement they have with the Electoral Commission. I, they should I, go to court on the issues that they have with media freedom. They say it's under It's not just about going to court, mm -hmm. one, but just going to court. You see, the judges and the justices are the supervisors of the realm. When you have problems that you can't resolve between yourself, you go to court. The problem is the time issues and all those other things. But you, were, yes. you were in the lead on Occupy Flagstaff House. Yes, yes. Why didn't you go to court? Why didn't you advise? Well, because that's a, that was a demonstration. That's also another legitimate but approach so, to voicing, <laughs> you know, your protest. Yeah, but yeah. my point is this: use the whole gamut of options, including protest. I'm simply saying, and I've said two things: it is legitimate 
You can do it when you're frustrated, you're not being listened to, but it is also important that you select and appreciate that some ceremonies of state should mm. be elevated above. It's okay. not just court. Demonstrations are part of it. RTI is part of it. Do everything legal, but don't talk about tyranny. Okay. We so the all things may be good. You may have a right to them. Then yes. not all things are beneficial. Ex yes, exactly. Oh, okay. just a quick, just yeah, quick, a quick, quick point. before uh, no, I, I, comes uh, Also, I mean, these are very important. It's not to belittle the issues that the NDC has raised. Mm. All the issues that, uh, but what They're I was very serious issues. Yes, but what I was saying is that there are actually openings, because you see, we can, we have to resolve these issues. We cannot ignore them. The EC has literally closed the door, shut it. No, but even the issue about voter suppression, mm. how are you going to, even if we're going to have a new register, potential, how, no, how sorry, do you, potential voter suppression? Sure, that is and the that reference to that US, is the, US that is, State Department. That is, uh, <laughs> that is the fear. We'll ask right. for the evidence of that. That is the yeah. fear, mm. but you see, how do you address it? You see, there has to be a resolution to it. Okay. What assurances mm. would is needed to make sure that okay. somebody doesn't feel that All right. people in their stronghold. So these openings mm. are there. We okay. should we should pursue them, mm. but we shouldn't give up. You know, throw our hands in there. Mm. And it's not that nobody is listening, or because as you know, Kofi is saying, it's not that people are. All of these issues that have been raised, he is very much you know following the EC register issue. Kode was involved, all kinds of people are involved. So it's not that the avenues are closed for people yeah. to listen. Oh, EC yeah. has closed it. They've told us whatever we say. All right, thank you. Do it. Thank you. Now, <laughs> let's, 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 let's get to John. And uh, all of you have done like 10 minutes each. Let's go to John too and see how he now, having listened to all of you, will be able to um, justify what they did and what will happen going forward. Thank you, Samson. Thank you. And uh, good morning. First of all, the question to ask is that what we did, is it legal or not? <laughs> That's the first thing. Because we've all been talking about, oh, the president, what he did is legal. What that person did is legal. So settle the legal issue. And I'm happy my brother concedes that these are legitimate legal tools available to members of parliament. Check the British parliament and check even the history of the British parliament and you come to the conclusion that this is legal. Kojo tries to draw a dichotomy and try to put it as if Diaz was right. I was, was wrong. Even listening to him, he says that they have a basis. And to the extent that they have a basis, they were within their right to pursue that course. But on hindsight, he says he would not encourage it. <laughs> you cannot say that you, have, you had a right you were right in pursuing it, and then turn around and say that on hindsight, you would not encourage it. You would not encourage something that is wrong. If something is right, if something is legitimate, if you are justification and good cause for pursuing a course of action, you cannot turn around and say that you wouldn't encourage it. To the extent that you wouldn't encourage it, it then means that it was wrong. And you see, I've been looking at the records to dig into what exactly they did. And there's been an attempt to present it as if they just boycotted parliament. And that we walked out. And Kojo says that the judiciary were there, the maze was there, the staff was there. Go to 2013 and listen or read about what the MPs did in 2013. They came to the chamber, took their seats. We, the, the speaker then, Speaker Doa Jaho, performed the prayers. The president arrived, took his seat. The ceremony, like you say, is that on arrival, the president takes a seat. Then the speaker, after prayers, invites the leadership of both sides to go and usher in the president. The president hasn't arrived. Can I, if you want, I'll read it for you No, here. no, no, just the factual inaccuracy is what I'm correcting. The when President Mahama arrived and prayers were said, mm -hmm. are you listening? Mm -hmm. The speaker, mm -hmm. Mr. Edward Joe Ajaho, invited the majority and minority leaders to, do to join him to escort the president into the chamber. And when the two left their seats and walked with the speaker out of the chamber, the impression was created that there would be no boycott. Suddenly, and to the surprise of all present, the minority started walking out of the chamber. And as they did, they pulled out plain sheets and shouted, Steelers! Corruption. As they strode out of the chamber, they were booed by the majority. 
What did they do? Where are you reading from? Peace FM Online. Okay. Peace FM Online. And there's another one from the Independent. However, while the MPP were walking out of the house, this another is online. I mean, this is record mm. for everybody to. So you cannot. So it's sort of the same thing. No, no, I'm coming there. I'm, 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 I'm building a yeah. point. And so this issue of we did it differently, you did it differently, is neither here nor there. There's an issue. Let's confront it head on. Can we do that as members of parliament? And you shouldn't be left to members of parliament alone. And I'm happy independent-minded people are commenting on this matter. And I'm even happy that in ending, Kojo says that this is the time for all of us to begin to build bridges and to discuss these issues. Not just about the boycott, but about the issues we are raising. Sure, of course. What the EC is doing, is it proper? Is it right? Life is not all about what is legal. It's not all about what is legal. If a policeman arrests you today, and takes you to cells and lock you up for 24 hours and releases you, he's performing his duty. What the EC is doing, is it proper? Is it I right? Think That's it's the question. Improper, yes. Once you say it's improper, it's not right, that must be no. it. No. Once we say it's improper, the EC must not take a belligerent stand. And from all indication, the EC has taken a belligerent stand. And they've made pronouncements that, irrespective of what even their own commission, the body mm. they established. It's amended. No, even before, they said that irrespective of what they say, they will proceed. Mm. The reasons they gave are sound to some people. That they are not sound to you does not mean the process must end. It's not just about it. I'm saying they've taken an intransigent and a belligerent position. They are not even ready to engage. And like Kofi said, if there's no avenue, if there's no opportunity for us to even discuss the issues, what do you expect the minority to do? Take the Ayawa so what we're going to issue. We've discussed it here. Sounds it. Every independent-minded person, every ind look, take NDC MPP out, will tell you that what is happening is improper. Nobody has been held liable. Nobody has been held accountable. Sam Georgia has announced on the anniversary of that event that he's going to... Oh, that's, a, that's his... That's his, his but I'm dealing with the state. The state belongs to all of us. The short commission recommended that disband that force. That force has not been disbanded. Then I go to parliament and see those people in parliament. But that's a recommendation. They disagree, that government disagree with the with. recommendation of the Ayawasu West Wagon Commission by the white paper. So you cannot expect a uh, an implementation of a recommendation they disagree with. And I have every legitimate right as a member of parliament to disagree with the white paper. The it's way to disagree with the white but, paper but is Jinnapoli. to go to court to impugn it. Can I make a point? Yes, go ahead. The way to disagree with a constitutionally mandated body like the EC announcing President Mahama, like the Chief Justice swearing President Mahama in, is to go to court. And when you go to court, you have no business pursuing the course of action they pursue. Mm. But just says that they didn't want to do anything to legitimize President Mahama's presidency. <laughs> Quick point of when information. MPs, wait, wait. Very oh, important to this. Look. Okay. The white paper cannot disagree with the position of law. The short commission reminded the government that those um, groups are illegal. Mm. They can't disagree with that. And, they the, disagree and the way to change and the way to change that is through court. Illeg no, that's no, what no, I no, meant. No, no, that's why I said, I'll come no, there. No, Even the court, illegal. I'll come there. Illegal means it has to abate immediately. You can't form a force well, outside. They, they say they won't listen to you. They have a white so paper. So that's why. So, so the white. Well, the only way you can they won't listen to it. Well. We wouldn't also listen, listen to him. Okay. With ah. the position of law, mm. they can disagree with the commission's recommendations. Right. They were reminded of the legal situation now mm. that that force is illegal. Mm. So that they can't disagree. So, can, can I can yes, so you won't do anything to legitimize President Mohammed's presidency. But when they came into office, and the Minister of Finance asked and requested MPs to fill forms, proceed to take pictures for their salaries to be paid. That one, they legitimized it. When it came to their salaries, and the president asked that fill forms, bring them to me so we can process your salaries, they legitimized that one. It was nothing but a political tool. That is a fact. Now, and I like your point, that the president says he won't listen. He won't listen to the short commission. He's issued a white paper. He won't disband them. He will bring them to parliament. The MP was assaulted. He was manhandled. Nothing will happen until the right things are done. The minority side, led by the venerable Harun Ibrisu, will not equally listen to President Akufuado. 
Mm. And I like the suggestion that let's begin to discuss the issues. You say what you they can't did go to court was ever. wrong. And you have my panelists agree that what they did was wrong. So why are you doing the same thing and being okay with it? I'm, I'm building a point. I'll deal with that. I'm happy that all of us are now suggesting that we should begin to discuss these issues. So that when we build consensus that both sides, irrespective of the challenges, one, we can use other alternatives, but more importantly, would open avenues for discussion and for dealing with these matters. I'm sure it would, would make progress. Mm. Look, this has ignited a lot of discussion. When they boycotted in 2013, I monitored the airways. A lot of people said it was consistent. Some people today who are condemning the minority, I listened to them. Unfortunately, you were not in politics at that time. No. What was your... Okay, I don't want to put you... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't to, I don't want to be... Well, I did not express a view on it. Someone has advised me not to get personal on this. I did not express a view on it. You did not? No, I did not express a view. But today you want to express a view. But fantastic. Yeah, Thank you. By then I was... Let them be public. You referred... <laughs> in, your press, in your press conference or statement, you referred mm -hmm. to a U.S. State Department report which buttresses your uh, point about trying to use the new register to suppress votes. Yes. Mm -hmm. The only portion of that report you can refer to is page 13, 13. which says, the June ouster of the Electoral Commission chairperson and the president's subsequent stacking of the Electoral Commission with persons considered to be biased in favor of the ruling party raised questions about whether the body might be used to so stifle, stifle voter, voter registration voters. among opposition the opposition's base. base. Yes. This is a suspicion, raising questions. This is not fact. We would not wait to get there and get our fingers bent before we begin to raise alarm. We would begin to raise the alarm best now. And uh, a lawyer, a doctor said we should campaign hard. Doc, we will campaign hard. We are determined to give of our best. But if the processes leading to the election is flawed, it's not free, it's not fair, it does not engender confidence, irrespective of the campaigning we undertake, it would come to naught. And so when we raise these issues, the U.S. has no interest in terms of the political divide. But they are telling us that they're stacking. No, the U.S. hasn't said that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the June ouster so of the Electoral Commission mm -hmm. chairperson, mm -hmm. And the president's subsequent stacking mm -hmm. of the electoral commission mm -hmm. with persons considered to be biased. Mm -hmm. This is the U.S. saying it. To use yeah, the, the word stacking. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Fine. But, but you said the U.S. didn't yeah, say that. Yeah. And I'm saying that the U.S. said that. If you want to interpret it, it's another matter. You are putting an but you said the U.S. did not say that. And I'm putting it to you and reading verbatim that the U.S. said that. The US if you said want that, to, there's going to be what? The U.S. says that, and the subsequent stacking no, but you of the electoral commission. No, if you want us to interpret it, you can have a different. Uh, I have no problem yeah. if you have a different and interpretation. Go in. And I have a different no, in the U.S. They have worse problems than we yeah. they have. I mean, so, <laughs> so they say I have no problems. That, no, that raised questions about whether the body might be used, might be used to mm -hmm. stifle voter registration among opposition. So, 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 de so therefore, the fact that they are raising it means that there's an issue to deal with. If they didn't find it credible, no, they're they talking didn't, about the fact that you are raising questions. questions. Who? They didn't say that I raised no, it. They, they, they haven't said, no, don't, don't interpret it the way... <laughs> but you can yeah, interpret it. The, the way you <laughs> want no, me to no, interpret it. No, 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 don't compel me to so, interpret so, the way so you want. So your next issue. But let me build on your, that. Your next issue. Mm. You, you talk about freedom of the press and closure of radio stations. Yes. Is that the forum to address that issue? It's one of the... Radio Gold, Radio XYZ. Yes, it's one of the reasons we raised. Tongo, which was closed recently... They were giving reasons. Are you not satisfied? Are they not going through the processes? Some have gone before the electronic uh, tribunal mm. at the NCA, and they have lost their case. We've raised several issues. Mm. And in fact, I put my weight even on the Ayawasu issue, mm. that if I see a colleague member of parliament... You have addressed that. We are asking about your other issues. Want, you, that is want, equally, you, want you to show why no problem. these I'll are so that. important that... Something. And I, you made a point that can you go to court. Life is not all about going to court. No, we are rational human beings. Look, recently, the Bank of Ghana raised the minimum capital requirement of banks to 400 million. Several local banks couldn't meet that. They fell short of the law. Mm -hmm. And yet, the Bank of Ghana decided 
that it wouldn't shut those banks down because it is not in the national interest. And so the fact that there's been an infraction doesn't mean that we must kill an ant with a sledgehammer. We must use our brains, we must use our minds. Mm. These are legitimate <laughs> issues we are raising. <laughs> Look, if we want to codify everything in this country, if we want to implement the law to the letter, I tell you we probably would have a very difficult system. And so in the interest of accountability, in the interest of press freedom, we hold the view that that approach was heavy-handed and would err. We prefer to be criticized. We prefer even to err against the law on the side of the press and on the side of the media. What we would and like to hear is to say, mm. in a time when you are in government, okay. you will never do a thing We like would that. never. We never did that. Thank and you. the records are there to show that Good. we did not Once do that. Once you are in we government, have done there's that. no motivation to do that, right? But they are in government, then there's no motivation for them mm. to do that. Mm. Who are in government will never to have that motivation. What? To do what? To shut down those radio stations. But government has not ah, okay, shut down radio stations for no reason whatsoever. No. What did the minister Samson, say? Samson, could you, you ask me a question? Could you ask me a question? There is a ministry that shut down. Could you ask me a question? Sorry, please. Could you ask me a question? No, sorry. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Could you ask me a question? That there are various institutions, they may be agencies of the state, that are responsible for all of these things you complain about. Why do you put the blame at the doorstep of the president? Mm -hmm. Take for example, if I just may, take for example, the EC's decision to compile a new register. And the closure of radio stations. You no, you see, the president has taken a position. Oh, no, 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 no but, but, but he's done that. But the president cannot he he hasn't hasn't even demonstrated JD, independence JD, JD. in that matter. But that is no, not true. President. That is not true. That is not Why? true. For example, didn't you hear the president for say that register? For example, for example, you didn't hear the president say that. that for register. example, for example, the EC has on its own said that it will com compile a new register. From April, Imani, for example, yeah. disagrees with the EC. Yeah. There are political parties that disagree with the EC. There are parties that agree with the EC. One. Say again? One party. <laughs> the MPP agrees with the issue. Yes, there have I'm been several other parties also that have also joined. Parties. Oh, please. Not uh, in law why? really. You now decide who is a party and who is no, not a party. No, they Let's not go there. The le but here's the point. There. If you are of the view that your position is so strong, there are acceptable legal ways of ventilating those views and even getting redress. If indeed you believe that the EC is wrong. There have been times when, for example, when we were in opposition, when we thought that uh, uh, the EC's use of an NHIA card as a basis to compile the register was flawed. What did we do? We went for a declaration from the apex court. When you were against the voters, I'm I'm to go. the voters, I said you go to court. You didn't go to court. What did we do? Voters Let registered, you didn't go to court. What we did hit we do? The streets. We hit the streets and nothing it's stopped legal. you from hitting the streets. But you don't, that is legal. You don't no, no, no. prescribe what we, we haven't do. said. We haven't hmm. said we are prescribing for you. We are saying that you can go on demonstration. It's part of the process. Nobody okay. has an issue with that. All right. But why can't you say that? Let's come to a resolution. You are actually saying that. Oh, when you just say that, no, I mean, I just wanted a quick rebuttal. Yeah, when you say that, plan. you are now going to disrupt an Article 67 obligation because of that. That is where we raise issue. But however, we have said that, listen, mm. we need to begin to quickly mm. do the things that make us. And now, for example, people say that the EC says it is not ready to engage. That's not true. The EC has engaged with you, has sat down with you, other groups, and has said, I have heard you. And I disagree with you. Why do you think that? As for you, mm. when you have a particular view, okay. that must be upheld. Thank you. And that Thank the AC cannot disagree Thank with you. Thank you. So, so, so the issue, the question I, I ask you, that's the one you should respond to now so Would that you? we close this chapter, about the reference to specific institutions that are dealing with the various matters that you are, you are talking about, and yet you are blaming the president for it. I'm saying that if you take the EC, for instance, the president has taken a position. He's taking a position with the EC. And we have taken a counter position. So the two of us. So it means the president is doing sorry, it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Can I make Could you wait? We had variance with each other. And like you asked, the voters register, when the MPP wanted a new voters register, there was an option of a court. Sorry, so you say they the, chose to you go say on the president has taken a position. They will choose to go on a walkout. Sorry. What is illegal about it? <laughs> sorry, you say the president <laughs> has taken uh, a position. Uh, can, uh, we, can we have a conversation, a dialogue? You, yeah. you say the president has taken a position because in the State of the Nation address, he said, when the register is open, go and register. That's the position he has taken. The NPP. That's the, the first time we have had the president on it, right? I'm saying that the NPP and the president. The president is a member of the NPP. The NPP has taken a position on this matter. Therefore, they say that they want it, and that irrespective of what we are saying, what's wrong the with that? Should go ahead. What's, what's wrong, wrong with, wrong with that? ours too? What is wrong with this? What is wrong with that? Why should you be listening mm -hmm. to whilst they should not be? 
Why should they be listening to when whilst we will not be listening to? So you see the irritation on the. You side. talk about the closure of radio stations and the uh, killing of journalists, um, and so By the way, so including on. stations that uh, I believe to be pro MPP stations, uh, so, uh, 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 to be whatever. That one too, is it the president you want to address those issues? Look, we have stated clearly that we would err on the side of the media. We believe that there should be press freedom. Mm. We believe that the closure of those radio stations was heavy-handed, was unfair, and was not proper. And it was one of the reasons why we staged that work. We want to send a message to the rest of Ghanaians and to the president. And I expected that if President Mahama was president and this went on, even if he cannot direct, he would play a role, intervene, add his voice, so that the radio stations will be back on air. That is what a future president Mahama will do. If President Akufado will not do that, that is his cup of tea. President Mahama some, some will do say, that some and support say, the and press they ask the and support the media. That just like in the banking sector, regulations and laws are being flouted and you looked on. In the media sector, the radio stations, some of them had defaulted over a decade, had not paid their uh, subscriptions, and you looked on. You say you, you chose that option to, to enhance media freedoms. Is that the best way to go about things? If I am in government, mm. the first thing I would do would be to remind the radio station, to write to them and to remind them. I wouldn't pursue that draconian policy. I think that and was if done. I am minister, no, that one was not done. Check well whether the radio stations were written to. And if I am minister of communication, they were written to and asked to if, pay up, except fact, that paying up at once in fact, was, some was, was a bit too much. Yes, 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 we would not do that. We would not do that as a okay. government. We would not advocate for that. Okay. And if I am minister of communications and such a thing happened, the first thing I would do is to empathize with the radio stations, is to add a voice and to plead that we ameliorate the situation. Take the easy. And like you said, the political parties are flouting the laws. Okay. Are they meeting the minimum requirement required of a political party? Good question. Has the EC sanctioned them? Mm. Has the EC struck their names okay. out? Is that not illegal? But should that be encouraged? No. And that is why I'm mm. saying that the law is made for man. You can't a man is not a made for the law. <laughs> and that <laughs> when such things happen, also use some rational element in order to address that you see people okay. that is our position and right. we would not move from that position. okay yeah, thank you okay. thank you very much so now the resolution as uh, we all understand is that the debates everybody should be allowed to go into the debates is that not so just it's, one minute yeah, could you? Yeah, because, yeah because that is the spirit of what yeah. article 67 seeks to agenda mm. some of these sidelines dramas we must begin to move from it i hear reference to other it's jurisdictions you yeah. should ask about <laughs> when was the last time you saw some of these boycotts and okay. some of these things see some of these advanced democracies all right. They are all moving forward. We should yeah. move. But you, you are saying that, in fact, you no. cannot be prevented it's from not possible. Exactly. It's it not for anybody, anybody allowing anybody. For anybody. So those saying that are nobody can stop anybody from going through that debate. It's not possible. It cannot okay. happen said, on the floor. I have said that. Uh -huh. You have heard. But why? Esla is a lawyer. You are saying that you know the law. No, no, no. It's not about Esla. It's not about Esla. It is not about illegal disruption. Those who have spoken, okay, have articulated the fact that they would also disrupt, like they disrupted. They will also disrupt any attempt by the minority. Then there will be no debate. I'm okay. coming. I'm all right. coming. I'm coming. Okay. And all of us are encouraging that no, no, that will important. not be proper. It's all right. Good. It's not just about proper. Okay. See, I think the disruption of a proper parliamentary process by even a member of parliament, yes. except where you have a clear case where it's a process, can be an affront against yes. parliament. Yes, you can be in contempt of parliament. That. You and can that, do that. That, that. That's different from a protest. Mm. Okay? You can protest, okay. but you can't Would protest. Would he have succeeded in, in disrupting it? Right. He would have succeeded, just like right. what so he did. Less, but right. we are getting to the point where we are saying that. No, it right. is not stop healthy. Anybody. All right. It's well, not yes. healthy. Uh, we should so, move forward. So, 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 as, so, as, as we take the break here, I, I, I have a little interest in one you of the well. aspects. <laughs> Do you think that some of the issues they raise, the president should be heard saying something about them, should be making some interventions by his speech? Some of the issues that have been raised are quite dicey and sensitive issues. Like I mean, the radio stations matters. Should the well, president be saying something? No, like I don't think he, the president should interfere in that. I mean, for me, if you take what uh, MPP's issue about compiling a new register mm. in 20, 2015 and so on and so forth, you have, there has to be a forum where, you know, outside of all the noise and so mm. on, where you can discuss issues. How, how do I prevent voter suppression? 
Mm. If there's going to be a compilation of a new register, actually the law allows, but we'll get there. Yeah, back. but we have to but, have but, that but, and it's not even it's not even a legal. That's and that's what I agree with John. Mm. That a lot of these issues is not just about the law. Mm. It's about even people having a shared understanding of what the problem mm. is. Because if you have some phantom idea about you know people being sort of prevented from whatever, we need to understand how would that actually occur if somebody was to attempt it, mm -hmm. so that we can put in the measures to stop it. Okay. But if we cannot even sit down and have that discussion, that becomes a problem. That's a risk so let's, wo let's work through mm. these matters. Thank you. Yeah. It's you not you just share the same view. The president should not be speaking about some of these matters. You shouldn't be making I any I think the president has made statements around these matters. If you take things like the radio stations, etc., I think the president should stay out of those areas. Okay. But the but vigilantism one, that there, one, I there I, are I areas really, to which we'll I think the president is duty bound, yeah. and I say duty bound. For instance, disbanding those illegal militias, he has no choice. And to the extent that he gives the impression that he is not minded yeah, to do so, yeah. I am terribly disappointed. Let me quickly this react to that. This goes to the fundamental Let me quickly structure of our state. You, you think the closure of radio stations is a small matter that the president oh, should not be so saying I didn't, about? Let me, let me make this point. Innocent slips against the law should be distinguished from plain Im impunity. Yeah, yeah. When you have a situation yeah. that runs in a number of years and people take the position that because of where we are, we don't have to obey the law. I support the closure of those radio stations. Okay. And I think the NDC should have sent a signal in their time mm. that this is wrong. Okay. This, that was impunity. Thank you. Could you take seconds? By the way, in 2009, check what they did to Choice FM. Here's my point. Mm. When the um, government white paper says that we do not agree with the Commission of Enquiry's view that the SWAT the SWAT team, which mm -hmm. has been there from about 2010, which is simply a composition of already existent um, elements from the military and the police that have been put together. And by the way, when they went to the commission, they made a distinguishing uh, uh, factor between the bona fide members of the SWAT teams and then these um, operatives or informants in Kaki, etc., who were with them. Now, the recommendation that the SWAT team should be um, disbanded it's explained clearly in the government white paper that this SWAT team you are talking about is an embodiment of people from police, military, etc., who have been put together. For example, when we are going for elections, you know we have an embodiment of what we call the election security task force, which brings together people like that. Is that a militia? Under whose command? Uh, but that is that is not no, 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 no. Those informants that's 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 Huh? Who commands what? No, you should tell me. Is he a civilian? It's not. The commander was there. Azuku Why was there. The it should not. Azuku weapons. was there. You're asking me about under whose okay. command? Why Azuku was, was there? Right. So our right. disagreement okay. is clearly explained. Okay. Now, secondly, it is not that they have made um, um, a declaration on a matter of law. And once they, the commission, make a declaration on a matter of law, everybody is bound to agree with that uh, declaration that they have made. They have expressed an opinion. The government has disagreed with that opinion. If you believe, if you believe, just was done. I mean. Um, um, World Cup, we came back, they came with a commission, report came, they disagreed with some parts of it and explained it in the white paper. An opinion if that you resonates believe, with the majority of Ghanaians, if that you believe is what the government The majority of Americans believe, believe that they should invade Iraq at a point in time. Okay. The fact we that the majority believe they didn't make it right. About the the fact that the commission the law, okay. Okay. Didn't, we'll make right. Right. No. We'll didn't make it right. We will be right back to deal with various other of the State of the Nation address. If you don't find favor with that one, you find a legally admissible you hey, welcome back. This is News File, your most authoritative news analysis platform. And my guest, Kujopon Kroma, um, <coughs> Kujopon Punia Sante, Kofi Bento, and John Jinapo. This show is brought to you by MTN Everywhere You Go, Bank of Africa, Strong as a Group and Close as a Partner. Amen, Scientific God is a Healer. Um, is the healer, Dura Plus, where Dura Plus goes, water flows. And COAFS, your immune booster. Uh, we leave, <coughs> we build home for you. And one X bets, fast pay. Now, we will go to one part of the, of the president's uh, statement you will find that he appears to have dedicated some time to the Galamse fight. And for those of us who have been 
doing that for a while, were excited that he gave some sufficient time to deal with the matter. The president says that uh, our lands, forests, and river bodies are being systematically degraded and polluted without any care. And he stresses that we owe it to generations yet unborn to resolve that matter. There are some who say this is the biggest problem now that we need to tackle now. We shouldn't leave the handle on it. Uh, people like uh, Lord Amwa, Dr. Lord Amwa says this is where government must pay a lot of attention to. So let's hear the president briefly and come to the studio and hear what my guests will say. And we have a different angle to it also. We have been talking about it for a long while, but have we been paying attention to the environmental and health implications of this? There's someone who has been writing about that. He will share some of his views with us. The future of our country, by gallantry is grave, and we cannot shirk our responsibilities in dealing with it. I'm appealing to the media coalition not to be daunted by the difficulties in the fight against gallantry. Government will not weaken its stance and welcomes the continuous support of the media coalition. The Interministerial Committee Against Illegal Mining has been working hard and has had some successes. Under the agencies of this, under the auspices of this committee, the Ministry of Local Government has formulated and is implementing the Alternative Livelihood Program in 35 severely affected Galamsey districts across the country. Last year, 500 youth, mainly engaged in illegal mining, were trained and graduated in vocational and technical skills from community development vocational and technical institutions. They've been provided with startup tools and equipment. An additional 607 youth are currently undergoing similar training, 240 of whom are in the community development institutions, while 360 Seven are attached to master craftsmen through apprenticeship at the community level. The for in forest reserves has declined. More than 4,000 miners have received training in sustainable mining. The number of individuals dying in collapsed mining tunnels and pits in the few unauthorized locations left has reduced by more than 90%. Operation Vanguard has been particularly effective in helping to restore the order which has permitted the reopening of the famous Obwasi mine of Anglo Gold Ashanti. The Interministerial Committee, along with Operation Vanguard, were determined to disrupt Galamse activities by confiscating equipment that were employed in these activities. In this regard, 12,000 Shanghai machines that go on the river and scoop up the riverbed were seized and destroyed on site. Some excavators were also seized, and a number of them, a number of them have gone missing. The police have arrested and charged some of the alleged culprits, and investigations are ongoing. No one, no one involved will be shielded no matter what their positions or political colors are. Right. Right, so that is the president. Let's begin by giving you some different perspective on the subject and get our guest to also comment on the fight so far. On the phone lines from um, London, is Kwame Sapong Esiedu. He's a pharmacist and, and fellow, Ghana Center for Democratic uh, Development, CDD Ghana. He has been writing on the health impact, the environmental and health impact of Galamse. He speaks of immediate, delayed, and deferred impact. And if you heard the president also, the president talks about what he says. He says, the lure of gold, once it takes hold, drives away all rationality. That is not a Ghanaian characteristic. It is a human characteristic 
that has been displayed all over the world. Kwame, thank you very much for joining us. Um, straight away, we have been told about the turbidity levels of the water, and we have seen evidence of all of that. What are the health implications of Galamse? As many as 12,000 Shanfang machines that are used in these waters, the president says, have been seized and destroyed. Well, thanks, Samson. And there are a number of issues we need to look at. The health consequences can come in three folds. There are the immediate consequences that we all see the things like uh, malaria going on the rise, skin infections, deaths due to um, pits collapsing on people, poor sanitary conditions, flare up of things like cholera and other waterborne diseases. So those are the immediate ones you can see that their disease burden is made basically up of infectious diseases. But that is the tip of the iceberg. Because then there's the delayed consequences, the ones that we are not taking serious cognizance of. And that is the fact that they use a lot of cyanide, they use a lot of mercury, and they use a lot of arsenic in these mining processes. So you have an unreasonable high number of poisonings occurring in such mining areas. But that is not as grievous as what we are doing to the children, especially those within the first 36 months of birth. Mm. Because arsenic and mercury are known to lower cognitive development of children, which means by virtue, we are delaying the ability to get educated in the sense that they wouldn't be able to comprehend properly when they get into schools. And if they cannot comprehend properly, then that means they cannot learn. Mm. And if you look at it for a child like that, whose farmland has been destroyed, his water body has been destroyed, they have a low educational burden. Now we are making them destitute from a social mobility standpoint. And more importantly, when mentally they are incapable with many of the activities of daily living. So that is the delayed consequence. Then there are the deferred consequence. That is what I call us signing a check into the future for which price we even don't know. Mm. And some of these deferred consequences are like the arsenic and uh, mercury and all that leaching into the water bodies. So if they leach into the water bodies, they are going to pollute the soil. And it's not going to be in, even in the local area because water roams onto the water table. Mm. Plants are going to pick it up. Animals are going to pick it up. It's going to go into our food supply chain. Mm. It's then going to lead to cancers, renal failures, coronary obstructive heart disease and pulmonary disease, a lot of things. And I'm asking myself, are we thinking about these things? This is are we scary. looking at the disease burden change that Galamse is bringing? And as a country, do we even have the investment in place so that when these things start to hit, we can manage them? We have to stop them. We don't even have to get there. Yes, and that's, and that's why I'm saying that are we even looking at the health consequences? Because mm. we don't have to get there. But it's becoming increasingly obvious that we don't even understand that we don't have to get there. From the president's, from the president's account, one of the immediate you know, consequences that you spoke about, falling in the pits, that appears to have been resolved. But yes. what do you think, what, how do you see the commitment so far? Well, our commitment has been like an ethical to say the least. I mean... And um, we cannot run away from the fact that the water bodies don't look great. Mm. But more importantly, the optics, the pictures, we see children playing in these pits and all that. And we have no health and safety regimens to try and prevent these children from going into these places, knowing perfectly well that these things are going to happen. We see these miners doing these things every day without gas masks, without any form of protective equipment. And we don't seem to realize that in those areas, we now feel rise on the high. We don't seem to realize that cancers are on the high. So mm. I keep asking myself, are, are we committed? Okay. So we are not only in is, danger of what the, yeah, Ghana water, the Ghana water has been saying and, in fact, has been doing. It's not been able to operate some of its lines because of the stability of the water. We, in our, our subsequent um, discussions of this matter, We'll try and bring the water resources people in here and the Ghana water people in here so they'll give us a lot more of the picture. Um, I didn't look at it from the elaborate manner in which 
you are looking at. You are saying beyond just the threat that we are likely to import water, we have delayed consequences that will manifest to cost us so much. Yes. I mean, you have to look at it from this point of view. If you look at places like Russia, mm. if you look at places like Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the deferred consequences of the use of the atom bomb and heavy metals are even manifesting today, years after the end of the 1945 um, Second World War. Okay. The same thing is happening in Chernobyl. All right. And so we shouldn't look at it. So mm. if we are not thinking that this is the extent of damage. And you see, I have written consistently that with the places like the Second World War, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, this was the world going into a meltdown. In our case, it's us pressing the self destruct us and trying to destroy ourselves. Mm. You ask yourself, haven't we gotten to the point where we can just take a hand off this button okay. so that we all don't get destroyed? You may think that's happening in, um, say, um, western region in some forest or mm. in a shanty region in some forest. But thanks to things like planting for food and jobs, those foods are going to appear on your table in Accra because you are going to go to Kalashi Market yeah, that's... and you're going to buy plantain that is high in arsenic. Yeah, that's, what's, finance, that's what makes it very, very scary. Cancer. Right, right, right. Thank you very much for uh, uh, showing us this. But I've, I've heard you make other comments on the state of the nation. Just briefly on your take on the health area. I've heard you suggest that the president may not be exactly correct about the NHIS uh, success that he talks about. How so? Um, Fasten. I mean, even before the president spoke, if you look at it critically, there were a number of things that came out. The Catholic Bishop Conference came out and said clearly... Okay. Did, did I lose uh, Kwame on the line? Okay. Unfortunate. Uh, we lost Kwame Esiedu Sapong on the line. And when we get him, we'll, we'll get him to uh, spend about two, three minutes on that issue about the NHIS because he's also uh, writing quite profusely on that aspect as well. So let me come back to my guests in the studio. Yes, Kofi? Mm -hmm. So we have been on this for a while. Mm -hmm. And on this platform, we're going to continue to be at it yeah. because we don't think there is an option. Yeah. Um, so... The president mentions figures that gets you a lot more scared. Hmm. Did you know that as many as 12,000 Shanfan machines, which are the machines used to pollute the water, have been confiscated and burnt? I didn't know it was 12,000 because imagine 12,000, they will fill a football pitch. Yes. I mean, that's Beyond the football serious. Pitch. So again, without going all around the issue, how did they all get in there? It gives you an idea of right? the, of the elaborate of the nature of it. Yeah. And I always say, look, if you have a problem that does not defy regular, normal human intervention and solution, then if the problem persists, somebody has decided it should persist. Mm -hmm. So I will continue repeating this point. Until the job of the district chief executive, who is the head of the district mining committee and the head of the district security committee, is made coterminous with Galamse we will not be able to say anyone is serious about this matter. Mm. Now, on this specific issue, look, okay, there's a lot of effort, there may be some results, but the problem does not seem to be going away. Now, I think we should start putting some specific effort on preventing the pollution. A point has been made that, in fact, even legal mining can pollute. Yes. So the thing about Galamse is multifaceted, but the first and biggest problem is the pollution they cause. The worst forms of pollution happen on the rivers because the water moves. We all end up drinking in one way or the other. Now, the technical know-how that is required to prevent pollution, and the prevention is one, making sure that the mining operations are um, supervised in such a way that certain materials are not used, certain materials are banned, they are not used. And then some materials which are not banned but are used have to be recovered so that they don't pollute the environment. So they have tailings, dams, they have plastic sheetings, if you go to the proper places where they mine, where they can recover these things and recycle or do whatever, so prevent them from entering the you know, um, environment. It is the Minerals Commission that has the technical expertise to deal with these things. The Minerals Commission should, as a matter of course, be at the district level, okay, there is one thing, fighting and stopping, but also we should have another aspect of the fight, preventing mm. the pollution. The president so far, talks about the excavators. 
Mm -hmm. And somehow, he doesn't give us any numbers. Mm -hmm. Were you expecting that he would be specific on the numbers? He simply says, some excavators were also seized, and a number of them have gone missing. That's I, all he said. I was not expecting him to go into numbers because that was very dangerous. It would have been very dangerous. Mm. I doubt if anybody knows <laughs> how many excavators have been seized. Mm. I doubt if anybody knows where they are. I doubt if anybody knows who has taken them. The excavator thing has become the heart of the scandal. So I wasn't expecting numbers. Professor it would have been dangerous. Professor says, while they may not be 500, mm -hmm. he says that, that it's less, mm -hmm. and he has reassured that they will find them. Other people say it's more, mm. and so it's all over the place. But that is also, the excavator issue is the heart of the scandal. Mm. It shows the failure and insincerity. So yes, I didn't expect the president to go into numbers, but the truth is, if we can nip this, you know, following the excavator is like following the money. Yeah. Mm. It will help us, you know, track who is doing what. Okay. But my, my point again is this. You know, we've had a certain outburst and reaction to this Galamse thing, which is not necessarily bad, but we must appreciate that all durable solutions are based on knowledge and steady action. No matter how well informed you are, an outburst, you know, and you know, this emotional reaction does not tend to so solve problems in a durable way. Mm. I think we are seeing that in the Galamse fight. Mm. I am asking that we start engaging the people paid to do the work, Minerals right. Commission, more okay. in that area. And the president talked about a lot of effort mm. and touted his achievements. All right. People's reality is different. Okay. And what is coming out and what is making the news is really where he is failing. All right. So I think you should give more attention to those areas. Right. So we may need the specifics. I'll come and then when I return, um, uh, Koja Sante will now also tell us what he thinks about the president's uh, uh, input in this whole discussion. But there are certain facts that have been laid bare mm -hmm. about the success rate so far and I'll also uh, let you know the figures. But Kwame Sidi Sapong is back. Kwame, in some two, three minutes, um, the NHIS, what's your reality, uh, contrary yeah. to what the president had to say? So, so, something, what I was saying is that we need to put these things into context. I've always said that ill health is not just the presence of disease. It's also the absence of health security for a large section of the population. So when you have a population where the large section do not have health security, mm. like either insurance or they can't pay for their health care, that is ill health. And if you look at it, let's put this in context. For two years, this country hasn't published its holistic assessment of the health area policy of work, which is a document that has to be published every year. Mm. The president comes and says that there are about 12.5 million active users of the NHI. Mm. That puts active use at over 41%. A simple check of the Global Health Security Report that was released in October last year, which gives us, at that time, what our health security index was, says that only 39.3% of us have health, adequate health care access and cover, which means over 61% do not have it. If you go into the um, holistic assessment from 2017, which was published in July of 2018, NHI's total utilization was 35.5%. The growth rate is 1.8%. Our population growth rate is 2.2%. Therefore, it cannot be correct that utilization currently is 41%. That is not correct. The what? truth of the matter is utilize, um, total coverage is about 36 37%. And routine utilization is about 29-30%. Mm. What upsets me is that if the government is saying these things, they tend to change, and the politicians know it. Both sides play that game. When they know that the, pop the numbers do not add up in terms of percentages, they use global numbers. They say 12 million. 12 million of what? Because what's the numerator and what's the denominator? Because they know that the only way you would follow them is percentages. And that is what matters. And like I was saying before, um, I got cut off. If you look at the number of providers who are saying the government hasn't paid them, and you look at it that from the, even from government hospitals, I've spoken to some chief executives in the last three days, mm. they haven't been paid for a whole year. And these are facts. Yeah, they, they, they issued a statement. They issued a statement on the, the Ghana Medical Association issued a statement on uh, February 21 about complaining about non payment of health facilities by national health insurance, and they are concerned that um, private health facilities 
um, have done services from or about March 2019 to date and they have not been paid and this is resulting in some of the providers threatening to withdraw their services to national health insurance card holders that that this in any way suggests that the president you know didn't have his facts right about what was going on because we are told that arrears have been settled and that is and something that is the other context you see it is correct that areas have been settled, but the areas that were settled were areas that existed and predated the government. And I have written about two weeks ago that what happened was the government paid off the NDC to store a 10 months, um, what do you call, areas, mm. by so being created a 10 to 14 month areas of this government themselves. That is what has come back to bite us. So until our politicians sit down and realize that you cannot play politics with the NHIS, the model in itself needs to be looking at to ensure that these areas not happen. Because the truth of the matter is, if you go into the 2020 election, there will still be areas. Should the NPP win? Fine, they'll carry it on. Should the NDC win? They'll come and tell us that they were historic areas and they took it over and they stayed. Okay. But the NDC will then leave their own areas and right. be in this circle forever. Mm. So you need to come up, be honest, have all stakeholders sit down, mm. look at the model and ask ourselves simple questions. For example, how come... Generic drugs are about 30% more expensive in Ghana than they are in the UK where I live. Okay. When actual um, purchasing power parity is five times higher in the UK than it's in Ghana, okay. how do you guarantee absence of ill health in such a population? All right, Kwame. how I'd want to leave it. Kwame, thank you very much. Uh, four minutes of you back on the line, very useful. And uh, let's engage to find the uh, answers to the questions that are being asked and as we interrogate. Uh, the president's um, state of the nation. What's your reality? Let your messages keep coming in. I'll be reading quite a good number of them. But, um, Doc, I was saying that in all of the discussion, it does appear we don't seem to pay attention to the level of success. It's just the bad things that have come up that we focus on. But the level of success is also important to pay attention to. Over almost 2,000 illegal Miners have been arrested. That's 1,772. There is 139 Chinese illegal miners deported. You have 2,779 weapons and ammunition seized. You have over 4,000 mining equipment seized. You have 900 excavators tracked. I don't know why they said that instead of talk about exactly seized. By, by August of 2018, they have seized as many as um, is it 600. Um, then we are told that 300 concessions have been mapped out for commissioning and 12 outboard motors brought for Operation Vanguard, both for Operation Vanguard to, as it were, uh, its tax force to do their work. You have district committees on illegal mining, that have been set up. You have uh, 4,500 miners that have been trained. The president talked about that, and that uh, 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 should to be applauded. They have been trained in sustainable mining uh, operations and community development vocational training, about 11 uh, set up to help the situation. This is, this is some of the challenges we have when we are discussing mm. policy outcomes. Because all that you have told me uh, about inputs and outputs, so I ask myself, at the time that we set up Operation Vanguard or Gallant Stop or um, the plans to have alternative livelihoods and so on, what really was our KPIs? What were we hoping to do in a year? What were we hoping to do in two years? Mm. I know that often some of these things are not put in concrete terms. Mm. But it always then brings us to a struggle for us to know are we making progress or we are failing? Measures of success. Me yeah, some measures of success. So if you say, okay, 2,000 uh, illegal um, miners have been arrested, okay, that's good because at least you are setting, you know, some, but does it mean that the scale of illegal mining has stopped? Mm -hmm. Because maybe you're taking 2,000, another 2,000 have come in. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, we, we get, and then when you begin to look at, you know, uh, people having problems with water. So what are we measuring? 
right? So it's, it's, this is the kind of thing that, yes, the president came in, there was an emergency, you know, certain actions were taken, but we haven't found a way to progressively track, okay, what would, what would we be able to see? And I think the water one was, for me, very symbolic mm. in terms of the turbidities and people could already pictorially see that, okay, things are changing. But that might be even a wrong way to measure because as you know, Kwame is saying, <laughs> you see clear water and you don't know what kind of chemicals that, that are, are still in there, right? Mm -hmm. you, maybe the mud <coughs> has gone, but it is probably more toxic than, than it was when it was even muddy. So that is the, the challenge for me. What I, I liked, at least uh, what the president said, which were, for me was positive, was even encouraging the media coalition, don't give up the fight. And, right. and in this case, we cannot give up the fight because the implications are severe. And the reason why we can't even give up the fight is that the underlying incentives have not changed. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So um, um, the, the fact that it, with, with the army going in, the fact that you have all these committees, you have alternative livelihood, it is not stopping anybody. Yeah. We deployed 400 men by Operation sure. Vanguard. The first uh, uh, warning we got was Anasis Exposé, mm. right, on uh, involving the uh, Mr. Charles Bisui issue, yeah. which is, you know, uh, the, the police. The environment minister recently joined news, followed him, and he took us to sites where yeah. they had seized machines and drove yeah. people away, and they are back. Yeah, even swing. the media coalition on many occasions right. put out concerns that there are still issues that are not being addressed. Mm. So for me... If we are not going to uh, deal with the underlying issue, which, me, which says that the entire local elite mm. in, 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 in our, uh, our polity mm. are involved in this, I'm say, the chiefs, mm. uh, political actors, uh, you know, uh, youth. There's so many people involved. Last week, in some Chinese were arrested and 15 excavators seized. They are still coming. Just this week, <laughs> three, uh, five people have been arrested, so, and we are told three of them are NDC members, and, and two of them are MPP members. And mm -hmm. they give us a hint mm -hmm. that they are tracing some politicians who are also involved. This from, right from the beginning, when we started hearing about Galamse, these issues were already put on the table. Mm. <laughs> Election year, people are looking to finance their, their campaigns. Mm. So the incentive to even uh, you know, go and try and get this as quickly as possible mm. before it gets hot, mm. is there. So my, when I listened to the president, what I was expecting to hear was not necessarily, I mean, I know that uh, the success or the gains that have been made that we put on the table, but it also signaled that we have not, we had to do something more. It was not enough the way that it was structured. Hearing uh, Honorable Fimpon Boateng and concerns about even the, the lifting the ban on small-scale mining, yeah. and that very fine line between that and Galamse, how are you going to deal with that? I expected more from the president in terms of new strategies. Okay. So maybe it's too early for, for them to take a full picture, yeah. but we need to go back to the drawing board and ask, how are we going to restrain and make sure, change the incentives for people on the ground? Because... We go, are not there. Go to the drawing board for what? Professor Fimpron Boateng says he's made over 70% success. How? How? In, in terms of uh, the, the excavators that have been uh, seized, that have been stolen, I heard that they are now returning them somewhere. I, I, don't, I think if we can't even accept the problem, right? If we can't accept the problem, because what is, what is perverse, right, is that somebody is entrusted with you know going to arrest a problem that has implications for the health of our children mm. for our polity all of that and they use that same opportunity to enrich themselves if it's, it's perverse you understand mm. so when you when you are seeing a problem like that you know that there's a root cause that we have not dealt with mm. now how do you deal with that the president said he staked his uh, his presidency on it because he understood the kind of drive, uh, uh, the kind of backlash mm. from even his party, because some of his party people are also involved. Mm. So how, what, how are you going to set an example? If we don't set an example, we're not going to deal with this. Okay. 
So we have to make, I think that is the kind of issues that I want to see. Right. It might not be that the president makes a public mm. pronouncement, okay. but also he cannot say he's waiting on the police investigations. Mm. Okay. Because we want, right. media we want right. more. Okay. And I think for me, that is, that is an area we have to look at very carefully. Lots of questions to ask. Now, now John, uh, from what the president says, that the layer of gold, once it takes hold, drives away all rationality. That's human characteristic. That's true. It's not you don't think the progress made ought to be acknowledged even before we talk about the excesses that uh, we are talking about? And uh, from uh, Dr. Kojo Kumpunyatsanti, do you think there's a need to re-strategize, not necessarily removing from Professor Frimpon Boating, who says he's done over 70% you know, of a good job so far? It's not just the lay of gold. The lay of power, the lay of money, all those things, uh, when it takes over you, you virtually lose your moral conscience. Mm. But there are some people who would never be taken over by the lay of gold. And so that general statement cannot hold forever. And you must subject that to analysis. This is a situation, I don't want to go into the effects of it, because we all know and Doc has done justice to it. Let me commend him. I mean, I, I would love to have his number from you. I can learn a lot more from him. I'm so impressed with his in-depth analysis. Yeah, he writes the Think, think Novit uh, yeah, yeah. on I'm health so, issues. I'm, I'm so yeah. impressed yeah. with the work he's doing. Okay. This is a situation where the president says he has put his presidency on the line. What exactly does the president mean by I have put my presidency on the line in respect of achieving success or ending galamsey? We must understand what the president means by that. That is one. Let's put that up. Two. Flip the coin. It means that if he fails... Without what is going on, wh where would we have been? But it's worse now. The situation on the ground tells you it's worse. Worse ah. even in the midst Look, of I, the, I, the, call them, if you like, call them little success. I have listened to the... I, I, I read the speech. The president was very categorical. Samson, this is a typical sh shangfang or whatever you call it. Yeah. This is how it looks. Mm. And I don't know if the cameras can pick yeah, it. The oh, shangfang. This is how the shangfang looks. There are some that are bigger than this. This is how uh, it looks. The, can please zoom the camera on it. Multiple yeah. of this. There are some that are the Chinese, the ones. It's just a generator. Yeah. A generator yeah. here. Right. Wait. This is it. Mm. Then, this is an excavator. <laughs> right. This is a typical <laughs> excavator. Mm. These are small, small, small machines, the Shamfang. They are small, small, small machines. The president can account discreetly to the last minute or the last digit how many they have confiscated. But he cannot account for how many excavators they have confiscated. He cannot. The president cannot. This is the state of the nation address. The president is accounting to the people of Ghana, the state of the nation. He can account for Shamfang, those mm -hmm. little, little things. But the president cannot account for the number of excavators yeah. that have been confiscated. That should tell you there's a problem. The minister of lands, I think Asumachireme, scored the government 85% success in December 2019. Today, the minister responsible for environment is scoring the government 70%. From 85 one minister, same government. One minister scores government 85%. Another minister, two months down the lane, scores government 70%. And this is consistent with the MPP. They like bundling figures, percentages, and throwing it out. So what is the basis for that 70% achievement? And as doctor said, where is the baseline information? You have destroyed 10,000, 20,000. How many more have gone there? You can be destroying 20, and 40 will be entering there. That's a failure. Mm. So these figures, our ministers keep bundling around and throwing about. I think they should stop that. And look, the commitment against Galamse is not achieved through high valuting loquacious, flurry languages <laughs> and speeches. <laughs> it is achieved with commitment and surrounding yourself and putting the right people on the job. And if those right people are not delivering, you have a duty as a president to fire them. What's the evidence of non-delivery? The man at the forefront 
said I've done over 70% success. Where is the evidence of that 70%? The evidence on the ground is that the, those the statistics I, I read to you are contained in the budget, 2020. So we know that 600 or 900 excavators now. So why can we say they are less than 600? Fantastic. If you know that we're dealing with 600 excavators, and the minister responsible doesn't even know the number, <clears throat> then our budget must be thrown off. No, the allegation is that 500 went missing. That's what he doesn't know for a fact. But he says it's less. They don't even know how many they have confiscated. They don't know. How even that contract was awarded to that gentleman, they cannot even tell us. Whether they even went to procurement and mm. went through the process, they can't even tell us. We have procurement laws. If you are contracting somebody, you must follow the procurement processes. Mm. They can't even speak to that. And yet they are quick to award themselves 85% marks and 70% marks. Where is this coming from? The reality on the ground is that we're told that Charles Bisu was exonerated with a so-called police report. Have you seen that report? Has that been made evidence to us? Have we looked at the report? He's still being pursued by, by the, the special prosecutor. By the special prosecutor. Yeah. Mm. Whilst the special so prosecutor I'm, I'm, is, is pursuing I'm him, I'm alerting you that it's not over. The police is alleged to have cleared him. And he's still at the presidency. The issue of Aisha Wong, such an embarrassment. Mm. Does that show a real commitment against the fight towards Galanze? You arrest this lady and claim that she's the kingpin and that all these shangfangs, she is behind it. So you are looking at the symptoms. You are not interested in the causal, the, 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 the causal effect and to deal with the root cause of it. That's why you are now having more Chinese coming into the system. In fact, Madam Ali Mahama is on record to have even threatened her own disease. So for me... Threaten them over what? Over Galamse. And say she will report them to the national security. If they engage in Galamse. Yes. Or they are engaged. I'll, I'll read that for you. I'll just go there. Okay. Outside. So if she is doing what Kofi mm -hmm. and uh, Kojo are asking for. That I tried to pull all this. You know, this we should take the DCEs to task. Now, Samson, you talked about those so-called five people that were arrested. That is most unfortunate. And it's nothing but a red herring. Fortunately, that they are tuned into joy at 6 o'clock p.m. to listen to your news. And I think one of your ladies interviewed a gentleman. He says that they've arrested five people. Two of them NDC. Two, uh, two of them MPP. MPP. Three of them NDC. They ask them, are they card bearing members? He says, no. How do you determine that they are NDC, that they are investigation? What are their names? You can't put them out. You are tracking some MPs. How many are them? You don't know. Are they NDC? Oh, the MPs are NDC, MPP members. Such people ought not to be at post. That is why we are failing. But is he not simply co uh, corroborating the facts as we know? <laughs> Look, it's nothing but a deliberate attempt to muddy the waters mm. and to create that impression okay. that it's a political problem. What should be done differently going forward, you say? First of all, the president must demonstrate commitment. By doing what? By appointing the right people there, holding them responsible, setting KPIs for them, giving them timelines, give them specific targets to achieve and be honest and truthful with the people of Ghana. Okay. That is what we expect the president to do. Thank you. That is what will Thank solve you. the problem. Thank you. Could you, Corruption Watch released a report. And in this report, which when you check from the Minerals Commission and so on, you will find very interesting uh, revelations. Over 30 billion dollars worth of gold, or is it 30 billion CDs rather, worth of gold left the shores of Ghana without any official knowledge, which means no taxes paid. And this was between 2015, 2016, and 2017. This was between which years? 2015 to 2017. Proceed. Mm. That tells you it's, it's a deep operation. Samson, this um, high falutin, lacocious, <laughs> flurry <laughs> language that John Jinapo has just poured out on this table. <laughs> 
is a typical him. example oh, of political posturing oh. that does not mm -hmm. get us resolution in the end. In the end, for example, and I'll come to specifics. In the end, for example, oh no, don't worry, John is my friend, so we have a good banter. In the end, for example, he says what he expects that the president will appoint persons literally who are fit for the job and that he will give them KPIs, KPIs that they will work with. Why are the superly competent people that Jomaham appointed to fight this thing? In these years of 2015, 2016, 2017, I'm coming. Yeah. Let me, now, I'm coming. I'm coming. Now, make, I will make myself. Can I make for, my submission? Can I make 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 my submission? The claim is that Samson, you are there to do a more competent job. Give him time to make job. a submission. Give me time you, to make my submission. You'll get the time, but I have I to ask the question. I choose to use my time the Go way ahead. I see fit. Let me make myself. I'll moderate how you use the time. Say, Sorry, I'm saying, let's go. Yeah. Oh, oh, I do want me to boycott. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying that as he's talking about these, um, you know, overly competent people with some KPIs, that that's what the president must do, show commitment. Why are the overly competent people John Dramani Mahama appointed to fight this? Why are the KPIs that he set up? I'll come to specifics. That's why we voted him. First of all, first of all, when you, and I like the years that you gave, which is why I asked for it. When you ask, this corruption watch report even just comes from 2015, 2016, 2017. Indeed, by 2019, early 2019, we had reports from Dubai that suggested that there was a sharp gap between what was being officially exported mm. and what was being imported mm. there. But go back. Actually, the fight against illegal and irresponsible, because there are some who are legal but are irresponsible, mm. irresponsible mm. mining started from Jerry Rawlings' days. That's when it started. Well, the true. data is out there. It's true. When they started uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, um, dealing with the phenomena as was coming on, putting at least boots on the ground and beginning to evolve a framework for tackling it. What has happened over the period? By the time we got to 2016, the minister responsible, the Honorable Mahama Yarga, I'm sure you have had opportunity yeah. to read his public commentary mm, on it. Yeah. Literally threw his hands mm, in the mm, air that it, it was out of not, hands. He could not manage it. It's not fair. There's a my joy online story. Mm. There's a it's my joy online story. And I want to request that you pull mm, it up. Mm. And perhaps we'll read it for the benefit of our listeners and our viewers who are here. That's literally what happened. Mm. So from 2017, what we started to do was to up the um, effort at tackling it. Kojo, for example, talks about the fact that maybe we need to change strategy. Respectfully, I disagree. You see, sometimes in um, a war where you have different battles, you may not necessarily need to change strategy. Sometimes you may just need to intensify some parts of your effort. If you take America and Iraq, etc., at a point they had to go for a search, not because we're changing strategy, but they realized that they needed to push more boots on the ground to contain better some situations. Now, in this particular instance from 2017, not only have we upped the numbers of uh, uh, troops that are out there between um, uh, police and military, not only was the Interministerial Secretary put together to deal with it, but you also saw, first of all, clear effort to clamp down on everything, both legal and illegal. And the KPIs, one of them being the water turbidity levels, the data is coming out gradually for us to begin to examine. I agree, and I think he does a very excellent job. I read a few of his pieces that it goes beyond just the water turbidity levels. Because, for example, I have with me here um, data from the Water Resources Commission. I want to encourage you to, like you mentioned, get yeah. in touch with them and yeah. then examine this data. Mm -hmm. Take 2015, when these chamfan machines were now actually getting to their peak. Those were the days when you began to see even foreigners come and do documentaries on gold in Ghana. And, you know, Galam in Ghana, broadly advertised on Discovery Channel, etc. This is when it was getting to its peak. If you take, let's say, the Pra River, they measure in about three places. Take Akim Brenasi, which is in my constituency, for example. The turbidity levels are measured in NTU. And they measure it twice, in the dry season and then in the rainy season. So you find that in February they measure, in October they measure. So, for example, um, 2015, Akim Brenasi, Pra River, 562 NTU. By the time you put more men on the ground, you are destroying these machines. You were beginning to arrest and deport. You even say that the deportation strategy, we could have gotten a better way around it. No problem. But the results were that by 2019, February, when they were measuring, they were as low as 17 NTU. In October, if you take the October data, Akim Brenner say October 2015, 381 by um, October 2019, down to 34. This February, when they measured again, it had gone up to about 32, which then tells you that some of the reports that are coming in are true that as we have opened the gates for people to go back and do legal, 
and community mining, some persons are taking advantage of it to misbehave. So it is real. Take um, Daboise, for example. 1,008 NTU in February 2015, now down to 686 in 2019 February. 847 in October 2015, now down to 466. But you'll notice, and I'll be honest with you, 2020 February, when they measured, it's picking up uh, again. Because again, as we open the floodgates and said people can go back and do legal and responsible mining, you are beginning to see some persons just get dirty out there. So the KPIs and the data, we now have a clear sense of it. If our good friends have any, they might want to share with us. But you see, this whole um, fight against illegal and irresponsible small-scale mining, and the president mentions quite clearly that he was supported by a strong coalition, what, what I call a coalition of the willing, media, vanguard, even citizens, supporting for us to achieve some success in there. What did we do? We were able to literally halt the entire exercise, now begin to regularize people who had licenses to go back, those who were not, or the illegal miners, trained and now we're giving them community mining concessions to go on. Remember that you can't do community mining in um, uh, alluvial places. You've mm -hmm. got to do them in some of these deep pits that have been made available uh, under the community mining program. Mm -hmm. Two new challenges have come up. One being the fact that as people are going back out there, we're beginning to observe or get reports that some persons are just going back into the uh, water bodies some persons are just uh, resorting, those, I mean, even those who are legal, are resorting to illegal methods. Mm. What do we do? What is a superior strategy? What is a more competent strategy here? Mm. Mm. Commission, people These are Chicago. some of the ideas. And then also, more importantly, you begin to have the force of the state clamp down and clamp down on these people. Mm. But the question is being and asked, is it, not, is it not telling, and I'm is it not that, telling that the mm. president can't give us the true facts of the excavator situation. Anybody who a big reduces issue. the fight against illegal and irresponsible small-scale mining to the president's lack of mention of numbers about excavators with respect is missing the big picture. So that's a huge challenge. You've just heard a very prominent doctor even outline the short, medium, long-term issues we have to deal with. KPIs, we have to all now begin to even expand. That's what you're talking about. Kofi says he dis disagrees and with then, you. Well, mm -hmm. but of course he's allowed to disagree. If that you're is not his measuring right. it, that is, you are not that managing is, it. That is his right. That is his right. You he's allowed that, to disagree with You know that. But you have just heard, for example, Kofi make the, uh, um, um, Kojo make the point that we need to even broaden the horizon of KPIs that we are measuring. If you say, I'm saying that if you see that your measure of how far we have come on the fight against illegal and irresponsible small-scale minings is equal to the president's lack of mention of a number of excavators. I'm saying that you are missing the big picture because the problem is way larger, way bigger than some excavators that the chairman of the committee has said he has difficulty in accounting for, which he didn't go to bed on. There are fewer than 12,000 excavators. He we didn't go to bed on. <laughs> we, haven't to measured, we haven't <laughs> measured, but you see, if, um, in my submission so far, and please listen to my point, I haven't said that the success of the fight lies in 12,000 chamfers that have been destroyed. I haven't said that. But you so if you flip the coin and you say that, therefore, by logic, by not men mentioning excavators, that can be accounted for. Therefore, you no, are failed. It's laughable. I'm saying that you have a bigger issue to deal with. I'm talking, for example, about water turbidity levels. Things we can measure and begin to see the can impact on the lives of people. You are having somebody even say that, broaden the horizon, go beyond that. You had a doctor on the line who says, even look at other health parameters. So I'm saying don't reduce it to this one. But let me make my point. Today you have two new challenges that have come up. One is people going back to do this. The second is that even the people who are supposed to be involved or supposed to assist in winning mm -hmm. this fight, we are having reason to believe that some of them are complicit right. in, the, in, the, in the retrogression mm. that may have occurred in some specific areas. And by the way, if you look at the water tables that are coming out, you can begin to see where success has been maintained and where there are slippages, and therefore concentrate your efforts. And I'm saying that even for those who are fighting, they are beginning to realize that some of their own people are complicit. Indeed, I'm not afraid to say this. If you talk to our security couples, some of them are worried that you have security persons, mm. military, police, other persons who are supposed to be at the forefront, doubling in illegalities and allowing some of these things I've spoken to about, go on. I've spoken about an operation Vanguard member, mm -hmm. police officer, reporting a military officer who is also a member who has been compromised and there is supposed to be an investigation ongoing both on the side of the ministry uh, of the interministerial committee and the army doing their own internal you know uh, process to discipline that uh, officer so if he's found so you are making my point yeah. you have reports of chiefs 
giving away water bodies or parts of water bodies to people that some persons might say, okay, okay, mm. you, you can do it, it on this side of it. Mm. Totally ridiculous exercises mm. ongoing. You mm. have reports of uh, 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 politicians getting involved. Indeed, yesterday I was watching Adum TV and I commend them for it. They sent a team, I think, to follow one of the uh, task forces that is doing some retrievals. And live on TV, they were broadcasting uh, incidents where excavators that had been seized were back on the field. People who were calling, mentioning names of people that because of this person released it to me. And that's what the president applauds, that he needs this coalition of the willing, including media, including his task forces. In why, I mean, why did they even have to form a task force? Because at a the point, they realized that some of the mainstream people who should be fighting were even getting complicit in mm -hmm. the scheme of things. Mm. Now, you recall one very prominent thing, which for me marks a major difference. When this fight started and you openly had people say that, Mr. President, if you say you fight this mm. thing, then we will not vote for you. <laughs> and the fact that traditionally we've been talking about political will, mm -hmm. that people don't have the political will, that's why they always, you know, uh, kowtow in the end. And the president boldly said that, listen, this is something, and you know those words that you just read about generations unborn? Mm -hmm. Mr. President insisted that be kept in the script. Those are his words. That's how much he believes that if you don't fight this thing, in the next 10, 15 years, we may not even have water to drink here in this republic. But he says that, if it means you won't vote for him because he's doing the right thing, you are, t you are you're entitled with the greatest of respect to keep your vote because he is committed to this. And he has proceeded, his uh, uh, interministerial committee has proceeded that even when they had suspicion that very senior entities within the political establishment were culpable in this, they didn't shield them. Mm. They've reported them to the police and have asked that that invest. I, I'm expecting that all of us will every now and then be calling the police PR and asking them, where are you? with this investigation. Why? When Obama comes to Ghana and says, we need strong institutions and not strong, we're all applauding like he says something nobody knows. This is the time for us also now to strengthen these institutions and chase them that, where are you with this investigation? The three people say, in Semonintin Obi Awudin, if these are specific persons who are involved in it, find them culpable, deal with them. I know my president's commitment, and he says it in the State of the Nation address, the government commitment will not waver. He you doesn't know, care who's People have asked a number of questions. I have sat here and last week I asked a number of Please questions. Ask. The minister, is alleged, not alleged really, he, 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 he sent a letter to the CID asking them to investigate certain people. Mm -hmm. And the question I asked was, he had claimed that these people, these people were arrested for involve, their involvement in the illegal mining and that someone's bank account was being used to contain these monies and divert it for private purposes. Yeah. Who did that arrest? And how come the minister is now asking the police to investigate and take action? Because initially, I think the matter was referred to the Bureau of National Investigation. Mm. And I don't know whether it was based on advice or because they were not seeing some traction there, he proceeded to make a report to the police okay. that they should also now pick up, arrest these persons, and get into an investigation. Indeed, it is my understanding that they have even asked the minister himself to provide a basic statement or to provide something they can begin to work. Because one of the questions you're asking, how many excavators are they even looking for? It's a matter that, I mm. mean, if, if, if you say you can't account for it, it means you had some baseline mm. which is not corresponding with what you have now. So that basic data, and to avoid this speculation of 500 or something, something, be able to provide some basic numbers so that the police can do that. That is why I'm saying that all of us have to keep an eye on that investigation. And The challenge. police did something refreshing. Yeah. When um, Horace Ekwawusi's name came in the yes. six people that they arrested, yes, 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 yes. yes. Seeming for the first time, they issued a, re a press release. Well, it's not the first to time. Give us, a to give us information well, about issue. the arrest that they have done. <clears throat> and question is, should they be giving us updates? You arrested them. You have given them bail. Where are they now? What is the process they to prosecute should. them? They occasionally should. We also should occasionally inquire. Let me tell you something, something. I'm personally very interested in how this investigation pans out. Because I've seen some mischievous elements on social media deliberately throw my name in okay. uh, that, you know, I am involved in it. No, or no, that, no. or that, that's or fine. that. Oh, hmm? why, have you mentioned your name? 
Is you are not a mischievous element no, I'm talking about. Part. You take your time. <laughs> take your time. He's been mentioned. Take Unless you don't know. Yes, He's been I've mentioned. Seen, I've I've seen, connecting I've connecting, I've connecting seen, MPs or so yes, to... I have seen, I've seen some mischievous elements. Where they elements. can get excavators. Some very mischievous elements deliberately throw my name in. That there's a particular video with my name. If anybody has seen this video, please put it out. Then I see another one where they cook up a fake statement attributed to the member of parliament for um, Abrasi Mukwabankese, where my mother incidentally hails from. Uh, that he says he asked me and I connected, and he's come out to deny it is not true. I'm very interested that they finish this investigation okay. and name the specific persons because I know All that right. I'm not so involved in any such matter. Right. But listen, mm. big picture, let us stop the attempt to just waver around the corners and score some points on it. And let us focus on the big picture of getting a broader KPI scale, mm. some more effort on the uh, clamp down of those who are doing it, mm. uh, some more education on our collective responsibilities. Because people can be doing this in the background, thinking that they're going to make some buck or two today, mm. not remembering what will happen to the future generations. I have kids. I wonder the kind of water that my kids will drink in the next decade Bottled if water. this thing goes on. Water. So we have to be clear, support the president, support the exercise, and win it. But if you try to go in the political manner, then we'll now also have to you know, uh, pull up the records. OK. And, 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 on, and we, we want to close the chapter on this and move to some other issue. But on the accusations, you find people trying to bring in you know, all sorts of people in, you know, with a name. For example, this same echo uh, we see who was mm -hmm. arrested mm -hmm. mentioned Kokubakun some time ago mm -hmm. and Anas as being mm -hmm. involved somewhat. And Koku sued him. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, on Thursday's uh, uh, graphic, yeah. if you read, mm -hmm. I hear his apology. Uh, he has a run, he's we run away from the court. <laughs> and uh, issued uh, an, apology an apology and paid for it mm -hmm. and said that he's wrong, that Kukubaku and others may have been involved. But one of the chief campaigners for the, the team, the media coalition, um, Ken, Ashikbe? Ken yeah. Ashikbe, is interested in knowing what the KPIs are, at least for the Galam stock. If we're talking about some percentage of success, and some say there's been 100% Success. Hundred percent success come, of what? Eighty-five. Yes. That's what the minister said. Yes. No, but listen. How come also that no DC or MCE has been arrested or dismissed, while there's galamse going on in their various places? So, you, you know, sometimes I like not to do these discussions in a very political manner. Take this seventy percent or this eighty-five. We all watch the video. Journalist around the good professor asking him questions. He says he's been largely successful. My friend Sander says, put a figure to it. <laughs> then he says, 70%. I'm not sure that's a figure that you are really going to pick up as data that we should begin to analyze and work with. I'm telling you, let's be honest with ourselves. When you watch that clip, do you really think that that is data? You see, if we want to do that kind of conversation. It was a rough estimation. It was a rough estimation. If we want to do that kind of conversation, we can score some points on TV and go. We won't get the thing addressed. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm telling you, for example, that in terms of KPIs, one of them being this water turbidity levels, even the detail is beginning to show where there is retrogression. Okay. Your cameras can pick it up. It's beginning to show where there is retrogression. Okay. Now, I would like, for example, that we begin to pay attention to those districts and mm -hmm. say, who mm -hmm. are the DCs in these districts? Mm -hmm. How come this is transparent? Then we are okay. narrowing down the fight. All right. Not this whole thing about... And we should okay. avoid... We're not going anywhere. Energy energy to so, 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 as you know, we we'll take a break Thank here. By mentioning names and dropping names. We we'll take a break we here, really and when we return... Like we take a break here, and when we return, um, we will look at a few of the issues that the president raised about corruption and the financial sector too. Many of you are interested in knowing. The president said from Monday, some is it five billion is going to be available. So all your monies will be paid in full. Those of you who were with the microfinance institutions, including the DKM, uh, those who suffered under DKM. Will that really happen from Monday? We'll be right back. You're welcome back. This is News File. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. Before we deal with the corruption matters, and part of the corruption issue, the president gives a, gives a promise that there are 40 people on prosecution, politically exposed people, and that there is even more, more than that number that will 
uh, face prosecution, including those who have brought us uh, to a point where many people put their monies in the banks and can't have access to them anymore, microfinance companies, um, among others. And the president said that the government is having to conjure 30 billion CDs to pay the 4.6 million affected customers of the banks. 13 billion. Uh, 4.6 million affected customers, yeah. and the government is conjuring 13 billion. Mm -hmm. 13 billion. Mm -hmm. He says that to tell you that there is 5 billion that's also been made available, that is additional money, that from Monday, those of you who lost your monies in these affected microfinance companies, including DKM, which collapsed in 2015, mm -hmm you will start receiving your monies. So many of you have been sending messages and asking for clarity. Kofi, I start with you and mm. very quickly about that. Mm. Um, he says they'll get 100% of mm. their deposit back. Mm -hmm. We have had some clarity that is coming up suggesting mm -hmm. that those whose institutions are uh, uh, regulated by SEC and not Bank of Ghana may not be part of this category. So. The principle in the president's promise is extremely important that if the government is going to help or pay or bail some people out, then it must be everyone. However, the distinctions must be made. There are situations where it's a caveat emptor, where it's an unregulated institution and you knew it and you went in. That one we can understand. But in terms of Bank of Ghana regulated and SEC regulated, mm. I think that the president's suggestion or uh, statement that everybody will be paid is important. And I am emphasizing this because I want that to happen. All that said, okay, I worry about the source of the money. Mm -hmm. And I worry about this actually... This is budgeted for. Yeah, the budget. and, and I, I, I don't want to go too much into that because I'm really more interested in getting people's money to them because I think it's crucial for just, you know, lowering the pressure and temperature in this system. And by the way, Mr. President, if you can do this you would absolutely make your chances very, very assured. He will win the elections. Oh, I didn't say that. So, but so, I'm saying, so, listen, so, there, so there's, a, there's an election. Uh, he is a politician. Th there's an election benefit to look at. He is a politician, and he will benefit electorally if he's able to implement this. So he may not be committing <coughs> our taxes. But he's not using uh, He may not be committing our thing. taxes <laughs> for, for a general good, but to make political gain. No, I didn't say that. It is a general good. And I'm emphasizing that it is important if we can manage it as a nation to do so. And then find ways of not getting back into this situation. But if as a person elected to see to our well-being, if he is able to pay everybody what they've lost in these finances, it will lead to very good, favorable you know, returns for him as a mm. politician, so rightly so. But the other issue has to be dealt with. Mm. Where's the money coming from? Mm. Okay. SEC regulated, I spoke, spoke Bank to the of Ghana regulated. Minister here, he said he's got some money somewhere. Okay. somewhere. But, 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 but that's part of the problem. Once it, the president has directed, he will ensure it is paid. That's what he, he said. He should do it by law. You cannot spend that money because whether you borrow it or you take it out of taxes, it's ultimately money that you are spending as executive. Mm. You must have parliamentary authorization to do so. So let him process it well. But I again, see. I'm saying, please do this. It will help so many people. Mm. And then let's figure out how never to get back. Why into have this we not problem. asked where is the money come from when it comes to the banks, where uh, over 13 billion has been spent? It's already. the same money. Uh, and and that's also news to me because we understood that upwards of about 17 billion had already been spent. It's the, the same banks. money. All of us lawyers have clients who are trying to get their money. They are not getting the money. Mm. So we've already asked questions about the big okay. sums of money that right. are supposed to okay. have been used mm. for this bailout. Right. But we don't mm. see much of the money. So please do it mm. because it really will help a lot of people. Okay. So, John, it's good news that uh, even DKM collapsed in 2015 under your watch. They, uh, the customers will also get 100% of their deposits. This actually means no uh, interest, right? Principal. First of all, DKM customers, we assured them they were going to be paid. And I knew that about 80% or so had been paid. You see, there are two situations, total customers and the value. Mm -hmm. So you might find out that 80% of total customers has just about 10,000, mm -hmm. 2,000 CD. Mm -hmm. But then other ones, so if you don't do the weighted and you just say, I've fulfilled 80%, 
when maybe the 10% carries about 80% of the okay. total value. Mm. So let's be very careful. The president says that Monday, that's tomorrow next, mm. some 5 billion has been made available and they will be paid. Where is that money coming from? They will be paid. Monday. <laughs> Fine, this is uh, uh, news file. No, we'll be, uh, this well, is news let file. Let him pay the people. Customers, <laughs> let him pay it the says people. that Monday <laughs> you will, will be paid. Five billion. I've looked at the budget and I've just gone to appendix. Yes, appendix. Well, the president didn't say this once. He said, I would like to repeat hey. that wow. all depositors yes. of savings and loans and microfinance institutions, including DKM, which collapsed in 2015, will receive 100% of their deposits. <laughs> Pay Look, the people. If you take the budget. By the way, you said it first on the 24th of December during his Christmas address. Sure. But this is the third time. Mm. Total revenues for the budget. Total, whatever we're expecting, is 67 billion. And it's itemized where those sources of funding are going to come from. Mm. Parliament has approved this through the appropriations bill. If government wants to raise additional revenue for spending, it has to come, come to back. Parliament. You don't, so you don't oppose the pay me, paying the people. Okay. So, so we have stated that we so, pay them. So government has not come back to parliament to ask for this. They haven't money. done that. Okay. That's not number two. So you're saying they, they can't pay. How are they going to do that? How are they going to raise that revenue? Where is that revenue? Can they going do to come it from? and come back to ask for approval? Where is the revenue going to come from? The minister is here. He should tell us where that money. Are you going to raise them in bonds? Maybe if it's a loan, he has to come. Maybe and it, because we've already <laughs> approved the ceiling for loan. It went, once you borrow another five billion, it will raise our deficit. Okay, so that means that you are doing debt financing. Are you, and are you going when to, said sorry, hold deposit, on. Uh, is it the full amount? It said the, all the deposits. Is no, it, the is full it amount. The case that, sorry, is it the case that you are going to pay and now go to Parliament for ratification? Because, like he said, there's no approval for this spending. Let me read the President's words because it's important we get him right. Okay. He says, I am informed that the receiver of the savings and loans and microfinance institutions will begin on Monday. 24th February, making payments to the customers. Mm -hmm. He hasn't said that it will conclude on Monday. We have to set that expectation I don't right. Think anybody no, 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 so. no, 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 no. I am setting that expectation mm -hmm. right so that you don't have an incident where by 5 p.m. on Monday, if somebody hasn't it's received all his money, mm -hmm. then, you know, he's exasperated. We have to get that ex uh, expectation right. In fact, tied to that, I want to call on the Bank of Ghana, I, I think Consolidated Bank and the receivers, to get the communication properly Absolutely outlined. Absolutely necessary. What are they covering? So that we don't set wrong expectations. The president has given a policy directive. What is your timetable for payment? What are the methods? Is it all cash or cash and bonds? What does it mean? They have to be very clear. So my question is, where is the money coming from again? I'll come to that one. But they have to be very clear so that we calibrate the expectations right. The money is coming from debt. It will be a borrowing. It's not from revenue. So. I understand what my brother is doing by saying that he looks at the revenue numbers, which has already been appropriated, and he's not comfortable or confident that it will come from there. It won't come from there. It's going to come from debt. There will be extra borrowing. Let me be clear. Why? Oh, Why? Because we finished the budget. I'm coming. We finished the budget before that policy approval was given. He will recall. We were at a committee meeting when the BOG came and made representations. And I'll commend the committee. The committee was very strong across both sides, very strong that, listen, the principle which Kofi was talking about must be extended to all other persons who uh, uh, invested money in regulated mm -hmm. institutions. So help me understand quickly. Are you going to put a supplementary for this to be approved? From, from, from what I see, we will need to amend appropriation. We will need to amend... On the expenditure side. Yes. We will need to amend Good. appropriation mm -hmm. as we go along. Because yeah, yeah. the budget had been approved before the 24th. Uh, uh, December. I mean, recall the president keeps traveling around, keeps engaging with people, listening to people. And after the initial cover had been done, I think about 10,000, 20,000, as he engaged some more, uh, I recall one of the meetings in which he gave the uh, instruction after mm -hmm. the back and forth that, listen, okay. cover everybody. But no but wrong is done then, if you don't seek prior approval. Well, no, we can go back uh, to parliament. We can go you back can to parliament. Um, come on, you know. You you it's not the you best, but you can. Sorry, sorry, we don't have time. Yeah. You know you that. We can go back to parliament and request what for an parliament amendment. Does not parliament will approve. We know, <laughs> we know you are <laughs> the, a well-minded <laughs> person who believes in this and supported it at committee. <laughs> and so we expect that parliament okay. will um, Thank approve you. that. But Thank I think you. we you, have to get yeah, the yeah, expectations yeah. right. I'll be right back and I'll hear you. Let's go to this last break. You're welcome back. So how do I manage with two and a half minutes left? Um, Eja Adam says, Samson, the massive sustained public backlash NDC has suffered since Thursday should indeed be an eye-opener 
that their decision to boycott both the upcoming voters registration exercise and December elections will be much celebrated. Really? Have they decided to boycott that? Uh, Musa Abatoa says, I could not agree with the president. Um, what the president was alluding to, real sonar is right here at Mayanka, where butchers used to buy um, 2,000 as moderate cow, and now they are buying the same for 3,000 CDs. He should consider going to Makola Market, KJTR Market, and other uh, places to check the true state of Ghana. Okay, so on the payments, what do you say, Kujo? No, actually, let me deal with the corruption issue. The corruption <laughs> yeah, issue. Okay. Deal with the issue. Okay, so one minute. Well, I mean, so I think for me, uh, you know, the president made statements. These are statements he's repeated mm. from um, uh, his uh, uh, statements he made at the, uh, at the bar conference last time about how he's dealing with corruption. I, I, for me, I think the problem is that I really think that that cannot be uh, the strategy mm. for uh, dealing with corruption. Yes, there are people in court and all of those things, but you read the Auditor General's report every year since 2017. Uh, you read, you know, all, all kinds of the people's verdict in terms of perceptions and so on. There has to be a lot more strategic effort in trying to create some fear, you know, in the system about engaging in corruption. Okay. One of the big issues has to do with how we regulate conflict of interest. Because uh, all the scandals, it starts from, you know, how people put themselves in conflict. Okay. And if we don't have that strategy, mm. the president will go through the four years, mm. we will look at the outcomes. Corruption issues um, have not changed. I, I'm sorry, but and we have a we system have that will system. automatically cut us out once okay. the time is All up. Right. And we have 30 seconds to go. My guests okay. have been Dr. Kojo Pumpunia Asante, okay. uh, Director, Advocacy and Policy Engagement mm. at CDD Thank Ghana. Kojo Kwon Krumah is Minister for Information. Uh, John Ablai Jinapur is Member Finance, Mines and Energy uh, Committees. And Kofi Bentol is Senior Vice President of Imani Africa. And Imani is raising new issues with the EC's procurement process. <laughs>